to the garbage of the evening it is the evening i uh i i was i was i was otherwise indisposed today and i you know i was kind of tired but uh, bane did his stream and i had some stuff i wanted to do so i thought you know what after bane and before my dinner i have a whole i have a whole ass like pork thing going on in the in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the slow cooker it's gonna be nice 
And uh, that's that's smelling up the place, smelling up the whole joint. It's a good time. Uh, but, but tonight, we've got a, a bevy of users. Uh, they keep coming in, folks. They just don't stop coming, and they don't stop coming, and they don't stop coming, and they don't stop coming. And uh, I, I have a few that I found. I have some stuff that other people found. There's weirdos. There's some people you might recognize if we get to it. I don't know if we'll get to it, but there's some people you might recognize. God, I have, like... Oh, how did I get, like, fucking five new fucking videos just... Oh, man. What the fuck even is this one? Jesus Christ. This is from two days ago. When did I even add this? I guess sometime in the last two days. Ugh. Well, okay, this... I mean, we might go kind of quick through some of these, because who knows how good they'll be, but... I mean, oh, the fucking stream deck isn't working. Hats off to this con. Hang on. Hang on, get it? Come, come on now. Open the fucking software. Open the fucking software. Thank you. All right. Um, so, yeah, we're here. And, um, and we've got KCPA movie Katsuki and friends force Rayman and Co to watch food fight. Oh, it's go animate. All right. Um. Uh. Well, never mind. Pretend you didn't see this one. Well, all right. What go? What's going on? This is like two hours long. So what the fuck is this? Oh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Wait. We should. Um. Uh. We should. Hang on. We should do the. Um. Uh... We should do the uh, bingo. Grab a bingo. Get a bingo. How did I get a new bingo? Oh, E equals MC user. Oh. What? E equals MC user. That actually is an Arion song, so it, it does fit, actually, with the theme. Uh, e equals MC user, everybody, and uh, grab yourself a bingo. I have the I have a bingo for you here. Copyright claim. Here we come. Oh, I love these people that just mash up copyrighted materials. You bought might as well just fucking put that on your card already. Where do we have do I blatant piracy? There we go. Let's fucking go. This user. This user. Blames every okay streamyard. Do we have any fucking go animate go animate or other? This user elusive user streamyard one oh one user multiple characters that might happen. Okay, well we're off to a good start here. Uh, let's go. Get me out of fucking. Come on now. Okay, get me out of scum vision. Let's let's go. 720p. 720p. La da 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 da! Okay. Uh, right. Uh, it's such a real f Okay, put down pretend- where is- what do you- where, okay. Do we have, like, fake- uh, you know, I'm gonna go fake TV channel. I don't know, is there another one that's more like this one? That I- cause- cause- I don't know. Cause this is, like, fake movie. Usually it's TV bullshit, but they like the movies too, so I think it fits. Wrong bingo link. Oh, mamma mia, mamma mia, por favor. All right, hang on, hang on. Let me see here. Copy that one. Now, does this work for people? Hang on, this might work for people. Uh, this this one, I think. Yeah, milk steak. No, that's another play link. What the fuck? Oh, that's the YouTube. Oh, uh, for fuck's sakes. Good for good for me. You know, it's great when you click. It's great when you click copy and then it just won't because sometimes that'll happen it, it just won't it just doesn't feel like it it's fine it just doesn't feel like it it just doesn't uh i think yours works milk steak but it's it's not like copying properly for me i mean i'll, I'll pin yours people can people can fucking uh, copy it themselves i guess i don't know if it's because for me it's bingobaker.com and then after the 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 hash it's just all uh it's 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 no longer a hyperlink but i mean i've got my own user card here so fuck you you can take your you can f fucking figure it out idiots figure it out loser users let's get this ball rolling
much certain. So it's Nintendo fucking... Who's behind this joint? It's 20th Century Fox, or just Studios, and Universal, and Nintendo, and also Toho. Da, 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 da. Awesome. I'm sure this is gonna be a great. What about like Ubisoft and fucking. Is that Bakugo? And we got like a Nickelodeon character, and there's just a gotcha life over here, sure. And then just like, I mean, Namco wasn't credited. Why is Rystar here? Oh, oh whatever. Let's just fucking do this. Oh, Bane's link works. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bane. Thank you, Bane. All, All right. right. We're watching some commercials. Yes. We're going to watch some commercials. Oh, you dear God. What the fuck? They, wait, watch food fight. So this is just them actually watching them. Oh. Oh, and it like has them reacting. Oh, it's like a terrible MST3K. They watch commercials? HD, DVD, and experience the biggest hits this holiday season. It's the worst MST3K you've ever seen, everybody. Football in run. true high definition. Oh. Wow! Wait, he breaks free. Go, go, He's gonna go on. But what are you doing? I mean, does this count as go in? Uh, supposedly it is. I mean, that's what it says. But I, I don't know. I don't know if this counts as go animate, really. I mean, this is, they're not really animated, are they? Game's over. Can clap trap is Watch zero. Movies in true. Yeah, I guess it's Caro Row Clap Trap Pikachu. Oh, they. Oh, this character is built into the DNA of this channel. This has twelve thousand subscribers. High def with the Toshiba HD DVD So so what the fuck do they do anything for? computers. Like they don't even have anything to say about it. They're just watching com this is so autistic. Alright, let's ride. Great, yeah, that's certainly awesome. How about that? Uh-huh. And there's and there's a sing. I think that was a Marvel. Okay. I know this is going on. So is Bomberman gonna say anything or like? No. I admit with you. Oh, here we go. So, so there's no commentary over the thing, but every now and then you'll get Rayman saying some, saying some slurs in British. Nine ninety nine. Whoa. These were some awesome commercials, Kirby. Yeah, Pac-Man. I admit with you with those commercials. So awesome and nostalgic, dude. Same. I'm not gonna give you British for that one, but you can use tech, vo you know, text to speech. I'm here, guys. So awesome, here, nostalgic, guys. and retro. Ha ha ha. Oh no, it's White Cloud Sky Days. Chandler McCann, Kai Chizaki, and Katsuki Makugo. What the fuck is this bitch talk? What the fuck? So awesome, nostalgic. What did I miss? I tabbed away for like two seconds. Check. And retro. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Oh, okay. It's these tiny other characters, right? Okay, sure. Very dramatic. They're like barely in the shot. Most of the shot, the focus of the shot is all of the cool movies you like. This is a bunch of things I know and enjoy, and these are my life. Oh no, it's White Cloud Sky Days. Chandler McCann, Kai Chizaki, and Katsuki Makugo. Yeah, what the heck are you guys doing here? Why are you guys here? That's right, idiots. I'm White Cloud Sky Days. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's literally just like a hundred fucking cartoon characters and then some, some cunt that he knows on, like, Gotcha Life. Some five-year-old con- <laughs> Gotcha life! I'm Chandler McCann. I'm Kai Kisaki. And I'm Katsuki Bakugo. I'm Katsuki Bakugo, everyone. That's my name. And we're here to force you to watch something- I'm from- I'm from the planet of the Navi. I'm Katsuki Bakugo. Really it's all one word. Roadville Movie Theater. Oh god, no. Please don't force us to watch a bad movie at Caroville Movie Theater. I mean, the well, thing is, I don't like My Hero, but, I mean, I mean, I don't hate it either, but, like, I don't, you know, I'm not big on it. 
But even I know that's... It, you, I mean, I know you're you're using the text to speech, so I guess it's what whatever they give you. But like, don't you think that it would be? Doesn't that set off the tism at all? Like, do, do, like that annoys me. Shouldn't it annoy somebody like this who actually likes my hero? Hearing Bakuki Bakuki Satigo or whatever his name is. I bet this isn't food fight, is it, guys? That's right, jerks. It's Food Fight, the worst animated uh, movie of all time. Is this the Dark Phalus? I think so, yeah. The, the These four collectively are like the Team Dark Phalus from Sonic Heroes. You know, you this is like you switch out between them and they do their different Dark Phalus attacks that give you different bad movies to watch. And the Rayman over here just goes, Oh God, I don't want to watch funny games! And, and and then this one smugly chuckles. Ha ha ha. Like that. Just like that. Guys, why the heck are you forcing us to watch Food Fight? Are we supposed to know which voice is which, like, based on... I'm, I bet if you're, like, really into this channel, you would know which text-to-speech is used for which... Maybe the description says... It does! Katsuki Bakugo. Oh yeah, and White Cloud Sky Days, I hate you. Who who's this user? More about this channel. Uh-huh. Oh, there's an exposed document. There's a whole bunch of cool exposed documents. That's awesome. Title in the description. Why don't you put the title in the video title area, idiot? Alright. Um well, it doesn't actually say which fucking voice to speech is like text to speeches are, are doing which character, so I guess fucking never mind. The cast is just all of the characters you can clearly see on the fucking screen. Plus Froki, I guess. The worst CG animated movie of all time. Yeah, you four shouldn't do that. This movie will burn my big blue eyes and melt them like ice cubes. Yes, Kirby. I agree. With What's weird is this isn't even Go Animate. Like it says that in the thing. I, 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 I mean, because they have it hashtag Go Animate. I, I guess I'll go with. I mean, I'll get. I'll go with Go Animate. It's, it's what they say, but, but it's barely Go Animate. It's more like an SFM animation that's really bad or something. It's just, it's just like a bunch of models standing there and. Kind of bobbling around to like indicate that they're talking kind of with you this movie will burn my big brown eyes and melt them like ice cream since this movie had really bad animation and stuff all right jerks if you keep this up with this food fight movie we'll beat you up yee hear what that man said if you keep doing this we'll beat the heck out of you no way you <sighs> the worst part is the fucking clap trap voice is like the best one here Jesus Christ. It's funny that there's still such a market for these rain, these terrible, like, Microsoft Sam voices. Like, can't you just use AI to do a Rayman voice at this point? I don't know. Just grab the Rayman voice lines from fucking, like, Rayman 3 and, and give them to an AI and just have it... Or even better, do the Rayman 2 gibberish. It's like simlish. It's great. You just do that. Where's Rayman talking in Simlish? Come on. Come on. Stick to the lore. You can do AI voices now. Is that not exactly what this is for? That's the whole point of AI voices, is to do Pac-Man in some weirdo's fucking fan fiction video. That's the whole- that's the only good thing it could do. That and maybe Code Pal World. But that's a, no, that's a whole other thing. We're not going to beat us up, you maggots. We're watching Food oh, Fight careful and with that's the M. Final. Careful with the M slur. It's YouTube, dude. Chandler. You squeezed my nose so hard it hurts so bad, bro. Oh, I guess they do have like an AI Pac-Man voice. I wonder what that's based on. I know. Chandler. Is that just like... Chandler! Is that just like a guy's... Just some guy? Maybe that's like the creator? I know there was a guy we looked at who apparently, like, put his own voice through an AI so that the AI would say uh, say his words for him because he was too, like, lame to, to say his fucking words on, like, in front of the camera. So he'd have his AI make him sound more human. I think that was Precious Leaf. So, so maybe that's what we're looking at here. Maybe Karoro Claptrap is... Is, is like feeding his voice into this thing through an AI and 
And now we get to hear his interpretation of how Pac-Man should have always sounded before they made him woke. Uh, you squeezed Unfortunately. my- Unfortunately. No, so hard it hurts so bad, bro. Shut the hell up and come with us to see Food Fight right now. Was it the Pac-Man TV series, Olivia? I, I mean, there was that- uh, Here's the thing. This isn't that disgusting Pac-Man. This isn't that horrific fucking Pac-Man that, that was in that cartoon. That cartoon was AIDS. The, 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 I, the, God, it looked so bad. And then they made a game out of it, and it was like Pac-Man World, but it was like a shovelware Pac-Man World. Fucking Pac-Man World was legit, everybody, if you ever get a chance. And by the way, don't listen to the reviews. Pac-Man World 3 is pretty good, too. But the first two are the real classics. Anyways. Maybe he took- maybe- he, Pac-Man, I think, talked in the third Pac-Man world. Maybe that's where it's getting the voice from. But Rayman is stuck with, like, TTS Charles over here. This is really a full, like, riff tracks, basically, because they would do, like, short, you know, shitty films, like Reefer Madness, and then they'd watch Space Audit- what was it called? Space Mutiny. They'd watch that. You know, some some shit like that. You know, maybe that's what this is supposed to be because I mean, they watch this and it it is just like ads before a movie, and then we get the actual food fight here. And there's like, what are they saying? What's Pikachu and Toad? What are they conversing about here? Smash bestseller of 1973 becomes this year's most exciting motion picture. Oh my god! Okay, Super Cops. Kirby's going to say that he's a cap. Hey, hey. <laughs> There's like animation here. <laughs> Somebody put effort into this for some reason. I don't know why we're supposed to be having this reaction. I guess cuz this does Kirby really like Annapurna. I guess. Hey, hey, Whoa! Good looking. Okay, and then there's go boom. Waiting to get filled with my meat. Yeah. Okay, no, yeah, this is. Pa I think this is f f a food fight now. For let Carl get up in them, huh? <laughs> Roberta, put or what is this? What the fuck is this? So they're all. They're not even saying anything. They're just animated in like Blender or something. That's what this is, right? That's why there's like a horrible gray void. They're in, like, a just a 3D program, I guess. Like, he opened up a fucking model editor thing, like 3DS Max or some shit. And, you know, fucked with the ears on Jigglypuff here to... Do you think Jigglypuff and Kirby would ever fuck? Anyways. You whore! Me eyes! They burn! <laughs> Please, no! I have got a familia! So I think this is Sausage Party, the adult humor penis hell. Does Bomberman say anything? Hunger's insatiable, buddy. I mean, no, Bomberman, as one would expect, has little to say. Uh, Pac-Man looks like he's just seeing sex for the first time. Together, we can fight these monsters and take control of our own lives. Come on. Well, I mean, Kirby obviously fucks, but like, do you think Kirby f would fuck Jigglypuff? And like. <laughs> There's gotta be fan art of that. <laughs> Cause they're very similar, that's what I'm saying. They're like the same shape. It would be very difficult for them to get it to go at it, you know? Join the fight! I don't know. Nobody ever thinks about things like this. I'm just saying what we're all thinking. Well no wait, those two sta statements don't go together. Never mind. But Pac-Man's having a hard time. Plan! Here goes it! Rayman's nose. I feel like that would get in the way of his vision. That seems very annoying. Everything! Yeah, are they just watching, like, the food fight? Uh, no, it's like the... Yeah, it's the other one. They don't have anything to even say about it. They kind of animate it and... But they don't even say anything! We don't even see that that's fucking Sausage Party! We see them reacting to it for the entirety of it. They have nothing to say and then... It... And like it shows the intro like title cards and then the the tr the credits and I don't think it even actually says sausage party on the screen maybe it does no no well I mean technically it does but like it just shows the fucking beginning and end of it 
This is so ridiculous. This is something that you would only fucking understand if you made this video yourself. Or if you've seen, like, thousands of these now, I guess. Okay, so there's a Ronald McDonald. Wow, they sure spend a lot of time not watching Food Fight. Do they ever actually watch Food f What the fuck is happening now? There's like a whole middle segment. What the fuck is going on here? Oh, this is like the fucking skits in MST3K, I guess. Except this looks like it goes on for fucking 40 minutes. What the fuck? They, they, it's an intermission, I guess. Even though they're 40 minutes in, they haven't started the fucking movie yet, I don't think. What the fuck is this? Oh, no, 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 this is the movie. They finally actually started it, and then... Are they just immediately going to stop it? Is that the joke? Yeah, yeah, we just immediately cut, hard cut away from the movie. And now we've got Persona music. All right, guys, we're going to watch some... Okay, now that's definitely AI Sonic. I know that anywhere. I mean, specifically, it's the dipshit Jason Griffith Sonic. That fuck ass. That fuck ass. I hope his car falls off a cliff. Did you move your trailers on the guy in silver screen? Sure thing, Sonic. I bet these are awesome and vintage. Yeah. Let's watch the trailers right now, you guys. All right. Here they are, boys. From the fast moving pages of. Oh, I really don't like this. Louis Lemoore's mm, best. This is like the best that this person can do for animation. This isn't a a three D void, by the way, because there's actually like a texture to the wall a little bit. There's something back there, and there's like some scum. There's some scum. There's some schmegma up there. So I mean, like I I don't know. Uh, which Sonics are these two? These are like hideous. This is like a hideous. He's got like smudgy, blurry fur instead of like. This is like a, is this like from a fucking phone game or something? Link novel, catalog. And the ears, of course, the fucking sex ears. It's Academy Award the, winner. The jabroni sex device ears that just keep fucking vibrating. Mule Brenner. Richard Crenna as the Marshal. Oh, Richard Crenna. Fire. Why did we fucking stop watching Food Fight? Even Eggman's ears. Blue. What the fuck? Oh, that's disgusting. Somebody needs to gif this! This really active. this really means my beans or something like that, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why we're getting movie trailers and bouncing ears. Does Mario's ears? We do. Mario's ear also bounces. What the f- is this a fetish? Alright, put down possibly a fetish, or definitely a fetish. I guess. We're just gonna... I mean, if you have it, just put down definitely a fetish. Whatever. Wait, you have weirdo ears. Uh, simulation insanity. I think this is supposed to say simulation of insanity. Like, f the feeling of going insane as you watch this. Uh, because that I think that's fair. Um, let's see. Announcement video. Should do a space for, like, there's just no... Uh, no like voice to the video there's no human on the channel it's all a like i don't know what you would say like no human voice on channel something like that you know and it's it's all just like ai and text to speech because you see that a fucking lot uh, uh yeah. why'd you kill that old couple we're gonna make dog food out of you that's it yeah it's Game's smg4 over. mario catherine deneuve is a call girl Huh. They're both professionals. Uh, they both take their jobs seriously. It oh yeah, simulation of insanity. I didn't say simulation insanity. Uh, that doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> Maybe I did. I don't know. These streams are all kind of running together at this point. It's been a lot this month. But I think I was trying to go for like it's a simulate. The, the video we're watching is a simulation of going insane. The feeling of losing everything, as the archive song would put it. In hustle. This is your Rota Rota man. Your plumbing stuff. So we've got multiple Sonics here. We've got Boom, Sonic, and Tails, and then we've got the other Sonic and Tails, and both of their ears are fucking going mental. And then 
and then I don't know what happened. I guess Amy and Knuckles and the rest of them got spared this this horrific fate. It's a nasty game. And I really didn't feel like we would get this much out of this video, but this is fascinating. I don't know what the fuck is going on here. I don't even know if I found this or if someone else posted this. Again, all the users are starting to... It's a blur at this point, but if somebody else found this, then good job. I don't know, but... Uh, Kororo Claptrap and... and and, 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 I mean, they clicked on this. This was supposed to be Food Fight, but where's Food Fight? They watched it, I think, for, like, two seconds. And then here's the Eggman's fucking ears going nutty again. Half of the video is this. Half of the fucking video is this, and then they watch other shit. Wait, we even get a close-up on Eggman's ears? Is this, like, a joke? Where's the ear close-up? Yeah, right here. Right here. Air. Yep. <laughs> Oh, there's the gif, everybody. You need, you need, you need some good ear action, some oral action. Genbei, tell me where you got the bear. You. <laughs> Genbei. We witness the unfolding of these detailed events. I mean, I, I don't know. It's either a fetish or they think it's funny. I mean, we get any another close-up of his ears. I took it to mean that you were a Westerner. What the fuck is this shit? Of values consistent with ours. And a man pays his... And they're still not watching Food Fight! Okay, this is another, like, skit part. We got another Go Animate here. There's a bunch of fucking pogies. There's a bunch of pals down there. Agreed. This is... Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, they finally watch it, I guess? Blast! It's like this! Where, what is going on in this insane shit? What is going on? Oh, okay. They they watch a bunch of previews, and and for some reason, look at this lineup of characters. This is like a Dragon Ball Z fighting game. It's just like fifteen Sonic characters. It's fifteen Goku's, and then there's like a the, the Cell is also there. And, and, and it's, why do we need two fucking Sonics? You can't even have classic Sonic. Like, you get this other one that looks very similar to Sonic and Tails. We did, you couldn't have one of them have, like, Knuckles with them or something? This is so fucking stupid. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm upset because I didn't. This video promised me food fight action and I didn't get any. Heartless. Wow, these were some weird and awesome vintage movie trail. Why do your ears make that animation? Oops. Don't you agree to- Instead of go animate, how about slow animate? How about you fucking slow up and don't do this anymore? Tails? Yeah, I agree with you, Sonic Boom. Weird and awesome, you know? Same here, guys. Incoherent? Absolutely. These movie trailers were vintage, awesome, and weird. Same here, guys. These were so awesome, so weird, and so vintage. Ha 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 ha. Ha, 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 Guys, ha. we got company. White Cloud Sky Days and her friends are forcing Rayman and his pals to watch Food Fight, the worst animated movie of all time. Yeah, I know every- So they're at, like, the movie theater arcade, I guess? Is that where they're supposed to be now? They're at, an ar they're at a movie theater, that's why they're- or, I don't know. Fucking whatever, who gives a shit? But they're at an arcade now, and this is a great selection of arcade games. I would love to play some... What is that? Cruisin' World? Is that Cruisin' fucking World? Fuck yeah. I'd play some Cruisin' World right now. But, uh, but, but I can't do that. I'm, I'm very intent... I'm very intent on streaming right now. This is very important. Uh, there's a good selection of games. And, uh, you know, uh, a good selection of, uh, fucking, it's pure Kino up here, obviously. You got Lethal Weapon, you got your Minority Report, which, uh, you probably want to keep that Minority Report well away from Mel Gibson. Um, or Tom Cruise, actually, also him. But anyways, so I guess this is, is this like the, I, I can't tell what the fucking text-to-speech. So, so, I mean, I don't know what's happening. I'm just an old, confused old man with, who needs my pills. And I can't tell if this South Park character and these Pokemon characters are trying to tell this group about the 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 story that's unfolding with Rayman and Bros. Everybody hates food fight. Somebody is they're ta they're at least they're discussing. That. So it's bad animation and unfunny humor. Yeah. Subjecting them to food fight. Dark Phalus once again is forcing them to watch food fight and review it. Now Lincoln, I agree with you. All right, guys. Here's the deal. Let's change it from Food Fight to the double feature of the Lego Movie and Mr. Peabody and Sherman. 
How's it, guys? That's an awesome idea, guys. Let that's an awesome idea, guys. Let's get going to Coral Volsime at last. Oh, that's... I don't even know what you were trying to say there, but at least it's better than the real Jason Griffith's Sonic voice. It's like this. Ah, yeah. So, yeah, we don't actually get to watch fucking Food Fight in this video. We, we get to... That's like... It's like clickbait. Most of the video is just, like, freebooting fucking... I don't know if that's the right term, but it's just... Jack and a bunch of fucking movie trailers from the 70s. Probably just from some guy's YouTube video that, like, compiled them all. Um, and then, and then that's, like, them watching previews. And then fucking, and then this is just, like, part of the overall story that Food Fight is being threatened in the, in the vicinity. Oh, I'm so sorry, friend. These, these, most of these characters still look pretty happy to be forced to watch Food Fight. I mean, I, I thought we were supposed to, I thought they were in danger. Couldn't you have at least given the Kirbys, like, some angry eyebrows? You know, like the American box art Kirbys? Why is it Detective Pikachu, too? It's a very odd selection, because, like, why it, I mean, it's like, okay, so it's like, it's like, it's like 2D art Jigglypuff, like, like, you know... It's, it's like drawn Jigglypuff, but then it's a render, it's a 3D render of, of, of this character. There's not a regular Pikachu. There's fucking three Kirbys. Is this even a real Kirby, or is this just Kirby 2? Is this like a real Kirby character? I know Waddle D. I think that's, or Waddle Do, or whatever the fuck, but this is, this is, this is, Kir is this like Kirby G or something? I don't know. Why is fucking Claptrap here? God, that sucks. Kibi? Multiple people have said Kibi, and I assume you're actually... Is that... I guess that's all... That all of you are telling the truth about that. Okay, that's really stupid. That's really stupid. Alright. That's the reason I don't play much of that series. It's very stupid. Okay, so Food Fight... Kirby's okay, everybody. It's fine. But Kibi is a really dumb name. Food Fight is a horrible this movie. This movie is total cringe, isn't it? Yeah. Call something else cringe. You might not have been able to hear it through the fucking text-to-speech, but that was Kirby calling this movie cringe. Kirby, I agree with you with this weird awful movie. Agreed. This is one of the worst animated movies ever made, you guys. Oh yeah. Guys. This is definitely real cringe, guys. Hang on one second, guys. Chandler McCann. Kai Chizaki and Katoski Bakugo uh, are with White Cloud Sky Days. Wh this is un this is intolerable. I mean, I kind of want to almost see see where it goes from here. They keep watching Food Fight. Claptrap has a big idea here. It's Claptrap's moment, everyone. Good for him. Yes, I agree with you. Oh, that's a really good character design there. I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> no, Larry, I am not. Well, I, this you. is the weirdest card in movie ever made. Do yeah. you agree, guys? Yeah, I yeah, at least Claptrap's like a robot, and it has the effect right. It's a good fake Claptrap. That's the that's the one like positive here is that there's a good Claptrap AI out there. If you really want to sound like an F slur. You can you can clap trap it up, eh, baby. Agree with you, clap trap. So weird and awful. Yay! I agree with you, boys. This is the very worst computer. I like how much of these fucking videos, like we, I, I there was something we watched at some point, or it might have been like a book I, I read or something. There was this something that I remember where it the whole thing was just I agree. Yes, I also agree. Yes, that's a good idea. I agree. And it's like, this is not exactly exciting conflict. I don't know. It's just reminding me of whatever that was. It's something lost to my, my elderly brain, but yeah, just, I don't know. I agree. This is bad. Yes, I also agree. It is all, I also think it is bad. All right. I'm glad we're all fucking in agreement on this. Motion to pass the movie. Animated movies of all time. For yay. Of course, it's weird and awful. We'll never watch this movie Where's again. Where's the conflict? Oh no! Now the nose is doing it. Where's the conflict? Where's the pathos? 
I'm sorry, I shouldn't have gone full screen. Now you can't see part of it. You can't see some of the, the ear wiggling and stuff if I go full screen. Sorry. The bingo's in the way. It's a great Mario. They're all so unamused. They're all not very happy. And now it's in dead silence, so just mark off ominous silence if you have it. Do I have it? I don't think I have it. If you have ominous silence, please mark that one down. This horrible dead silence as their ears continue moving. Hang on though, I'm sure there's something we could set to set this to that it would work with. Hang on. Uh, I think I have. I think I have just the thing. Um, I have to get up for a second, grab a drink. Uh, enjoy this. I'll be right back, chat. Sure is a lot of this, isn't there? Wait, what the heck happened to Food Fight? Did it get Dumbo turned off subliminal? into a good animated movie? Yeah, Food Fight is already gone now. Why did they turn off Food Fight? That's right. We changed it from Food Fight to the double feature of the Lego Movie and Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Happy now. No way, not the Lego Movie and Mr. Peabody and Sherman. These movies are so horrible. Put back Food Fight right now, you idiots. No! We're not putting back on Food Fight. Again, you're supposed to somehow know which of these characters is talking with the fucking... God, I went full screen again, for fuck's sakes. You're supposed to know which of these characters is talking with the fucking uh, text-to-speech bullshit. Um, but for obvious reasons, you don't. Uh, and, and I think it was probably this one who was like, no, put back on Food Fight, I like Food Fight. And then everybody else is against her and what doesn't want to watch Food Fight. Food Fight, we're watching the double feature of the Lego Movie and Mr. Peabody and Sherman and that's final. So deal with it. And here's what you get for forcing Rayman and his friends to watch a very bad movie. Yeah, we have to cancel this user because he said the Lego Movie was bad. How can you fucking bash my opinions like that, dude? Oh, I like the Lego movie. It was pretty it was pretty cool. CP was in the Lego movie. You guys remember CP in the Lego movie? He was much better in the Lego movie than he was in the Mario movie, CP. So it seems like CP's performance in the new in the new uh, Garfield movie is also not going to be very good, but still probably better than CP's performance as Mario. Um, I think he, I think, I think CP was pretty good in the, uh, in the Lego movie though. I think, I think he, I think CP was, was well cast in the Lego movie. Nice one, Jerry. You taunted these bad troublemaking guys for forcing innocent characters to watch a bad movie. Oh yeah. That is apparently what he likes to be called, CP. That's apparently, he's so, like, out of touch Hollywood man that he... He really likes the initial CP, so I mean, I, I'm gonna go with it for him, that's what he wants, that's- I, I have to respect his pronouns. That's yeah. what you deserve, it you for troublemakers! This All is the Bomberman voice? What's a bad movie? Oh yeah! That's what you deserve, it you for troublemakers! Alright you guys, one with the show. Stay mad, you for troublemakers. So we're just watching more of this shit now, that's what's going on. Ah, 
Gucci, Gucci. Um, it's great. <laughs> yeah, CP stands for C and P. Dumb name. That's yeah. So, so instead of watching Food Fight and making fun of it and having a good time, you're watching a bunch of stupid garbage and wiggling your ears. Okay. Well, that's basically what we're doing. It's just trailers. Oh, here they're talking for a while. This is cool. This is good stuff. Never mind. We're just watching them wiggle while we watch. Okay. So, <clears throat> I'm good on this channel, but I, uh, or I'm good on this video, but I do want to look at this channel a little bit, see what else they've got going on here. It's a lot of beyond bullshit. And this is by no me. Oh my god. Look at this. This was from two days ago. This one is slightly shorter and was from three days ago. Wow. How to wiggle your ears and noses. KCPA short. Oh, this is a thing. This is definitely a thing. All right, class. We're going to talk about how to wiggle your ears or your noses. So, who here can wiggle your ears or noses? Um, yeah, that's, that's fine. Um, creepy laugh. Um, go for creepy laugh. We're, all systems clear on creepy laugh, over. Um, uh, why, why is, why is they, why, why is they all laughing? That's really spooky. I don't like it. Hey, what's so funny, you guys? Well, I was thinking about every character's wiggling ears. It is so funny, Zach. Yeah, yeah, Kirby. I agree is with that you. Is the Pal World monkey? Is it? I, I, don't, I don't know. There's a monkey in Pal World that looks like this, and then... Why does he have a weed leaf on his face? Uh, I, I would assume Nintendo wouldn't give a monkey a weed leaf. Uh, so, so, so... It's probably Pal World. I was thinking about Dopey from Disney's Snow White, Duck Kirby, and Waddle Dee. I have seen the 2001 Platinum Edition trailer like a hundred times. Ha ha ha. Just being sarcastic. Oh, I see. So yeah, it is. The, it's the Pal World monkey. It's, he's there. He's there. Anyways, Wild. let's see who can wiggle your ears. Who is first? Anyone. So huh? why is like reverse Warner Brothers Poland ball like teaching this class? What's going on there? What's going on there? Who is this supposed to represent? I don't know who this is supposed to represent. Maybe it's rapper offline. It's w O maybe. Cause there's, it looks like there's eyes here. It looks like it's covering up W B though. That's certainly the logo. Is that maybe just his face? And I'm looking too in, too much into it. It looks like the W B logo, but backwards. I'm first to wiggle my ears, Mr. Warner Bros. Great Sonic. What, You're Mr. The first Warner Bros. Who can wiggle your ears. Why is Mr. Warner Bros. teaching this class how to fucking groom their? <sighs> Whatever. Hang on. No, god damn it, you cunt! I selected this one. There you go. All is now at place in the world. Show me your ears. All right, check this out. You see, this is a re-upload too, chat. You know, this, this video almost became lost media. So it's a good thing this one's been saved. This one was archived. That's, it's for the best. You don't need people to, to track this one down, you know. Why does Sonic have a camel toe? Uh, man, I don't want to be looking at these fucking models, man. <sighs> Great job wiggling your ears, Sonic. Who is next to wiggle your ears? I'm next to wiggle my ears, Mr. Warner Bros. Go for it, Tails. Show me your ears. Don't forget the noses. See, so Tails just has a little button nose, so he can't wiggle his nose. But then you see here, like, most of them do, too. But Rayman's got a big fat schnoz, so he can wiggle his nose. He has no ears, though, so he can't wiggle his ears. Maybe he can wiggle his hair. Now, Rystar, what does he do? Does he just wiggle his, like, side of his stars, I guess? I, I, I guess. 
Uh, a lot of them... I mean, what does fucking Squirtle do? What are these disabled children going to do that don't have ears or noses? Like, what the fuck are they supposed to do? Just wiggle their tail, I guess? You're- you're- this is a- this is an awful class. Yeah, I like Tails' cross-eyed look. This is really good. Why does Tails have one bigger eye? What's going on there? That is horrifying. Awesome sauce with your ear wiggling, Tails. Who is next? I'm next to wiggle my ears. Alright, Detective Pikachu, you're the next character to wiggle your ears. Show me your ears. I love it how they able to wiggle their ears and their noses in the proper way. Very awesome indeed. And then there's just a lot of emojis there. Um, what you up to, Mateos movies? Mateo Corzuz. Minecraft and bullshit. Alright, never mind. But wait, what's this? TTS Simpsons movie. Oh, that sounds really funny. Wow, look at all this cool text to speech content. Great text to speech content, guy. Alright, good, good. Cool channel. Cool entire life that you have. Um, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's that video. And, uh, yeah, they've got, like, oh, I think that, I think I remember how I found this, right. I found this because I, I heard about a thing that was, like, I think it was called Drive-In Delirium. It's, like, a six-hour compilation of, like, mo shitty B-movie trailers from, like, the 70s and 80s or whatever. And I thought that that might be funny for a stream, but then it's, I think it's, like, sold. It's not a, just a thing that's available on YouTube, so... Probably can't watch that, but I think looking for that was how I, I found that. I think that was this morning. I found this this morning, and I was like, I, I even made a post on my thing. I was like, wow, this is a, I looked up a completely different thing, and what did YouTube give me? Fucking users. What do you bet YouTube gave me users? And it's a user who also does grindhouse drive-in movie trailers from the... I mean, I guess this is basically what I was looking for, though. I mean, I guess this is basically what I was exactly looking for. It's just like a different version of it. It's this guy's cut of it. And hopefully doesn't feature a bunch of weird ear-wiggling fetish fucking Rayman porn or some shit. Um, you can never escape the users. Also, logo people. Um, yeah. Stories or requests. I make movie trailer compilations, go animate beyond videos, BND of Doom logos, whatever that fucking means. Um, and then you'll see down here his DeviantArt includes MST3K in, in the name. So, yeah, no, I, I would say that that's exactly what that, what that was. Was them MST3King a movie, except they didn't have commentary, they just had wiggling ears. Um... Opening to Wall E DVD in G major. Uh, Megatron gets grounded. Awesome, awesome stuff. Dark Bowser and friends ditch the Christmas party. Oh my God! Dark Bowser is here. Mecha Godzilla shows up. Z Metal Sonic forcing Rayman and Co to watch modern SpongeBob. Ugh. Modern SpongeBob. Um. Well, I think I want to watch the Dark Bowser one here. How much? Okay. How much of this is just going to be the same shit? Is he going to have, like, a horrible Dark Bowser? Hey, guys! Like, the fucking voice changer and everything. Also, who is this? Is this Wild Woody? Who is this banana man? He's a banana. He's a banana. Who the fuck are these horrible creatures? Jesus Christ. It's like Nintendo Direct music stinger. The gang's all here, yeah. All right, guys. We're gonna watch some vintage movie trailers. Sure thing, Sonic. Let's watch the trailers. Oh, yeah, Sonic. I bet those movie trailers are weird and awesome, you know. Let's watch the trailers, you guys. All right, starting the trailers now. <sighs> it's exactly the same thing. 
they wiggle their ears, they watch the trailers, they wiggle their ears. There's like a bit of a side plot thing about me and my 400 character friends that love me and get and give me head pats and tell me I'm okay. Tell me everything's okay. They all Kirby who gives me head pats and tells me everything's okay and the little hat ghost and Jigglypuff too and the fucking banana from Roblox, I guess. They're all there and they're all there and they talk to each other with their text to speech voices and it's the same thing. Listen to that noise. Move. Cool. Um, we got a. I guess this is a squadron of evil people. We got, you know, some evil transformers. It looks like, and there's a this marshmallow guy with a pride flag. That's pretty evil. He even said he was gay. There's Dark Bowser, which is like crazy because Dark Bowser, like Bowser's already pretty dark, but here's Dark Bowser, the darkness. Um, and then you get Metal Sonic, which isn't the most metal of Metal Sonics. You could have gone with, like, the Silver Sonic or the Mecha Sonic, but, you know, it's a good choice. He's, he's pretty evil. He's, this is pretty, these are, these are a, a good, these are a good new troop of villains. We have a new enemy in town. We're going to rent on a user. Um, yeah, so that, that's this channel. We got some of that, and it's mostly that. Um, interesting stuff. Oh, I like that there's a little Doctor Who up here, too. He's just peeking out of the... Little Tom Baker, he's just peeking out of the thing. He he just sees it a little bit, and he doesn't want any part of this, and he's gonna... Shoop, he's just gonna go right back down there. He's just next to fucking Zero and X over there. That's cool. Uh, that's, that's, um... That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Um... Let me see here. Let me see here. So we got a whole selection of people that I have saved here. Um, well, next up we have this fellow here. You might have seen this highlighted as the next video we uh, had in the list. Uh, this is, uh, let's see, let's get rid of that. Yeah, that's much better. So this is something, I don't know what this is, actually. I have no idea what this is, but he has 20,000 subs, and he appears to be a real person, and he likes Nostalgia Critic. Big Jack Films, highlights of 2023. Not Jack's film. Not Jack's films. Not J -J -J Jack's films. Not Jack film. But Big Jack Films. Very specific. And he's got a... a uh, um, a very worried looking tank engine and some kaijus and some uh, uh, sailors uh, I guess and 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 he, I like that nostalgia critic is right next to Sailor Moon there that's he he's he's right where he needs to be um, he's 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 in good 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 position there and I think this is big Jack's films here next to George Carlin and the anime characters um, <laughs> And also Harley Quinn in a DeLorean, I guess. All right, sure. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. And don't forget to support our Patreon. Uh, Just a dollar or more will get you early access to all of our content as well as other special features. Enjoy the show. Oh yeah, the, the George Carlin reminds me of the fucking AI George Carlin special that some fuckers made. There's like a there's like an a, a full it's like an hour long or more. It's like an AI generated George Carlin comedy special. And I just I'm just I'm just so sad. I'm just so sad. I weep. It's a, such a cosmic it's a cosmic dread for everyone. Uh if I could cry, I'd cry now for everyone. Da 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 This is cinema, people! I saw James Rolfe there and a gorilla. <laughs> Buchanan Company. Right, they make good stuff. Oh, good. Cosplay highlights. Anime North. Ah. Oh, great. Oh, good. It's in Toronto, too. Is that fucking Bunty King? Boy, you just...
just chose to record this, didn't you? How much time have we had at this point to, to, to know that it's better? Like, this is a fine little Mac, but I don't know. I don't know what you're going for, but you're probably not pulling it off, buddy. Same with your friend here. Is he supposed to be a Dragon Ball? He's not a very good Dragon Ball. I don't think the fucking Walmart sweatpants and t-shirt are really pulling off- and the- and the- the Skechers down here are really pulling off the Dragon Ball look, or whatever this is going for. <laughs> Alright, never mind, this is alright. Oh yeah, pregnant spider Gwen, hell yeah. <laughs> No, this is the only Goku I'll accept. Alright, well this is just cosplay stuff, that's fine. But we want to see, is that a spy, what the fuck? Where's the Subway sandwich? Anyways, um, yeah, let's get to this. This is, there's LARPing and stuff. Let's get to the real shit here. Give it down to me. Uh, here we go, here we go. That would be moi, Big Jack Films, you're welcome. God damn it, Nostalgia Critic, I thought you were stuck in the nerd's closet! Oh no. I got out. Oh no. Okay, well this is hardly the time to reach it. You're like... You've actually got him in your video? Oh no. By the way, get yourself a new bingo. Why do I still have the same bingo? Hang on. Grab yourself a new bingo, refresh your bingo, it's in the bottom right there. Um, this user... Um... Let's see. I, I could have used bandy cam last time. Uh, Cana I, he sounds Canadian. I'm going to go with Canadian just because it was Toronto. He might have traveled there, but he sounds Canadian. T tentatively, I'm going with Canadian. I mean, when, is unflattering angle, does that work if someone's just ugly? I don't know. Um, I, I think I, I don't have much here so far, but this, 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 this video looks good so far. Hey, nostalgia Critic, I thought you were stuck in the nerd- So not only- this is such a great frame so far, you've got Nostalgia Critic happening, you've got Ready Player One, you've got this fucking jabroni. Hey, I thought you were stuck in the nerd's closet! I got out. Okay, well this is hardly the time to reach out to me. The Earth's being invaded right now. Maple. Yeah, connection to known user. I'm really surprised to actually see Doug here. I kind of assumed it was going to be just like memes of Doug. It was going to be, you know, like clips from Nostalgia Critic. No, I guess he's actually here. Believes must be one hell of a drug to conjure that delusion. Now, there might be a Canadian PSA for that. Look out your window, Critic. He's got the fucking power glove and everything. Jesus Christ, dude, the moment has passed. Find a new thing. It's not your time to be a cool internet reviewer anymore, dude. Well, that's just a typical Tuesday for Chicago anyway. Yeah, so don't bug me again. I gotta finish this I don't review. I think these are just spliced together clips. I mean, unless he found perfect clips for it. Maybe he's doing the thing where he, like, puts his own shit in here to fit, you know... But the but he said his name. He said Big Jack Films. So I, I think it's just real. Dude, before the reviewer could be cameo. Shambles. Reviewer lore is still a thing. The reviewer versus even Doug is confused why this is happening. Again, I gotta finish this review before the reviewer versus in total shambles. I can't believe this is happening as of three days ago. <laughs> <laughs> We're just never gonna escape this, are we? Didn't we? Didn't we have a whole movie to end this stupid reviewer verse bullshit? Wasn't that the whole point of that terrible movie, the third one? No, let's not do this, Big Jack Films. It's not necessary. You were Laura still a thing? He's so Ten confused. Years picking up your shit, you left with the plot hole, critic. Uh, 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 uh. You never see. I just want to die! I just crave death! I really wish I was dead right now! I really wish that I... Uh, um, so this is actually directly connected to that stupid fucking movie. Oh god. Oh god. Ten years! Uh, Your incompetence entering the plot hole and causing the chain reaction wave to happen- This is a canon sequel? <laughs> What this is, is like, it's like when you get like a weird 
fan thing that gets kind of grandfathered into the lore of something else later on as like a respect thing. This is like, it's not really a sequel, but it's kind of, it's like an official mod by fans, you know? This is the Sonic mania of, <laughs> of to boldly fuck. This would allow Gamor to be awakened after seven years of being sealed away since the Great War. Ironically, ten years since I started my freaking show. Freaking. Um, uh, you might as well put that down as refuses to swear. I mean, if we hear a swear at some point, then you can revoke it. But, um, yeah, so this is uh, real. I want to know what video this is from. This is from Ready Player One. I mean, shit. Oh, good, he's got a whole P.O. box here. Oh, great. Now some of us are still picking up the pieces you left in order to save the review of us. When is it not a thing? <sighs> so... Where did he get this? Is this like clips from that fucking movie that he's like put into his own thing? Or did he get his friends to do this? He, he just has- no, this is real. This is a real production. He's really trying, I think. These are- this is like him and his friends maybe in outfits. This is full on- we- we're really getting some dark phaluses tonight, aren't we? We've got some full dark phalus action right now. Back for more, Commander. Kind of a prick, ain't it, boy? Kill him. Jesus, God. This is worse than Movie Bob. This is worse than the Game Overeater. So why haven't they just hit him yet? Why haven't they just shot him? Great. Uh, uh, the official. Is that his actual car? Does he just have a DeLorean? No, I would assume not. But that is like an. Uh, that is an Ontario fucking license plate. So. is cringe but why do we cringe i feel the cringe but i don't know why i don't know either i don't know either but it sure is <laughs> well no i do know why it's because this was embarrassing when it was made 10 years ago but now it's being made as of i guess 2023 at some point some point last year he made this video and this was what was in it and it was embarrassing <laughs> Does he have, like, he has his own Tamara now? Then put it. What? That is so hot. Why, why would any woman be near him? Why would Harley Quinn be involved in this? I, I guess this is a Ready Player One review. This has to be his, like, he must have just had access to a fucking DeLorean to do this. This is a real production, people. He's got actors, he's got fucking shots, he's got somebody manning this camera right now. He's got a DeLorean, he's got, like, guys to shoot at him, he's got the nostalgia critic. The real nostalgia critic, people. And yet, with all of that effort, he's making... This. This is what he's chosen to make. So, for those who don't know, I just attended G-Fest in Chicago, Illinois, uh, last weekend as a- He's got the consume cave happening. I want to say that, but it seems to be a bunch of fucking- These, like, Lego pirate ships or something? I guess that's better than having, like, 
fucking Iron Man glove or some shit. This recording. So first things first, I did plan on coming in on the Friday, but unfortunately Josh, who is one of our uh, people who works with us on the show. Uh, this guy looks like he has seen hell. Show works at UPS and they called him in to work that day. So we're on our way to G-Fest. And, uh, nice sunset, I guess. It's kind of boring, but all right. Kind of want to go back to the funny video that we were just watching, buddy. But all right, I'll give you a moment. Like through Jurassic Park. Ironic. Let's hope this goes smoothly. We're gonna die! So, we are... All right, that's quite enough of that. Now, um, so Big Jack's film's over here. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, um, I mean, yeah, you know, look at this, look at this part three, two and a half, how long, what the fuck, how long is this shit? Where's part one? Oh, 4,000 views for part one, and all of that bullshit was going on. Well, you know me, I love Ready Player One, so let's let's watch this. That's that's my favorite book at Ready Player One. That's my all-time favorite. So let's see some more of that, this review. I don't know what they're selling. Can't go full screen, I forgot. There's a chance that I could just see this guy at some point. I know this station. But it's pretty crazy. Hey guys, what's up? It's Big Jack Films here, and welcome to our 10th anniversary special. It's finally here. I am so sorry it took so long, because... Part one, and all these other parts are extremely long. Part one is an hour freaking long. God, just splitting this up is a bloody, bloody mission in itself, isn't it? But I just want to say thank you all for being- He's been working on this since, like, when fucking Ready Player One was new. Uh, ish. Jesus Christ. This is like a longer video editing process than YMS. Being so patient with me. Waiting for this thing to come out. It's I'm so excited to show this off to you guys. So big thank you to everybody, especially on those on Patreon. If you guys want to go support our channel, just a dollar more will get you access to all of our content as well as other special features. And there are so many people I have to thank right now who participate in this episode. The entire cast and crew, not just of this episode, but like my entire show for the last 10 years. Amethyst Cosplay, Dr. Terawatt, who's now Chief McBeck on Twitch. But my He's got so many people. Most notably, spoiler alerts, Doug Walker, aka the Nostalgia Critic. He was oh my God. such a nice chap getting us a cameo, and he's such a nice chap. This is one of the reasons we've had this job for 10 years. In fact, so, I mean, I guess it's a cameo thing. This is but part of the review. Still in there. Reverse, and it's a continuation of that. So it's part of the reviewer verse. This man is saying this in public. There's people out here with lives and jobs and families, and he's talking about the reviewer verse. Anyway. I what is this fucking haircut you have? Like, I'm sorry to make to just be like little haircut, but I mean, this is such a like '70s haircut. You look like Getty Lee, like from the old days. You look like 2112 Getty Lee. You look like a member of Black Sabbath. It might be time to just like spruce it up a little. Don't even cut it. Just, just, just a little trim. I don't know, different style. That's all I'm you saying. You guys enjoyed this episode. It was a lot of fun to put the together. The Michael Moore uh, cut. Arguably my most expensive episode to date. Uh, brace yourselves for a huge epic finale for season seven, and don't worry, we'll be back with season eight. This is gonna be the hardest thing I I, I ever do in my life, and I will never. This is I've, I've, I've actually had it. So he's like comparing himself to Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings man, uh, with this Ready Player One film review that he's made. I had, had enough really of these <laughs> Well, I mean, that's not, I mean, it might just be a joke or, you know, hey, I like this guy or whatever, but it's, uh, there's an element of it that looks a little bit like, okay, settle the fuck down, champ. It's just a YouTube review. It's just a review. Don't, just don't shit your britches here, it's just a review. My next movie's gonna be very simple, whatever. You didn't make Lord of the Rings. Thank you guys so much! Enjoy the show! And here's one. Well, nothing's wrong with Getty Lee, I'm just, but he even sounds like Getty Lee now. He's very loud. Welcome to Toronto! This is my normal speaking voice! This is like, it's something in, something in Canada, we've got Getty Lee and Neil Young. And they both just sing! And that's just how Canadian people sing, I guess. 
The we following- We just do like a weird falsetto. It is a fan-based video review under fair use. Ready Player One is owned by Warner Brothers Discovery, Village Roadshow Pictures, D-Line Pictures, Crown Publishing Group, Emblem Entertainment- I own nothing! All right. Oh, guys, he's got the font for reviews. He's got three different fonts here. This makes him a real reviewer. Worthy of your time. We're learning about all the lore, the previously on. We've got to learn about what happened to Dark Jack films. Or I guess maybe that's just Jack film. That's the one who, that's the one who got doxxed by Snipe Wolf. Uh, uh, Jack, Jack film is forcing him to to watch Sniper Wolf content. Still no lobster font. That's the the none of them are the right font. You'll know it when you see it. Yeah, that was the evil gamer. He was gonna force him to review Dante's Inferno. Big Jack Films here. Jack, you've been at the damn thing for over a year. Are you sure the doctors didn't give you faulty hardware? He's been my friend since I was a boy. Oh my god, we've got the whole ten year. This is a 10th anniversary special, so this is like... This guy's been doing this for ten years. Oh god. Chat, there's so much content! <laughs> You might want to get in there and, I don't know, archive some of it, but... Just because, I don't know, this this fella, he's he's a real... This is some real art here. Without him? This looks very promising. <laughs> oh, God. This looks very promising, Chad. The fictional dimensional transporter would have been nothing more than a pipe dream. In 2003, Dr. Oh, my God, Ezra Miller is Miller here. ...took in an unknown assistant to help him with his early technological experiments. Somebody, somebody has to get a magic mush here now. He missed someone. He missed a big name on his rip-off rip nostalgia critic video. He's, he, he talked about the cartography guy and, like, the fucking dude... There's a few that he mentioned that I'd never heard of, but this is a big one. This guy seems like he's a big one. A head psychiatrist at the local mental hospital was rumored to be working on experiments with volunteer patients. The doctor has since been unknown to the public eye. Yeah, bad hair. Choose to forget. I'm gonna go. To take out I I have no choice. Yeah yeah, go get the Avengers, buddy. Um. Green Goblin, sure. I have no choice but to go with anachronistic, because that's what this is. This is so anachronistic. This is so incredibly anachron- This is so out of time and out of space. This is- This is from another fucking universe, where these videos stayed happening and people didn't, like, grow up for and realize that they weren't very good. And very anachronistic. This does not belong in this timeline. Least of all- When did this come out exactly? Hang on. This is from a, this is from Jin. This is from a year ago as of tomorrow, chat. This is a one year old video as of tomorrow, and that'll be the the. So I guess tomorrow's the eleventh anniversary. Well, happy eleventh to Big Jack Film here. Uh, Big's Jack Film. Uh, the, uh happy eleventh. You know, as of tomorrow. But this is this is this is a uh, quite a fucking video, isn't it? This is quite a good start. What's in it for me? <laughs> the rumors are true then. The Dark One lives. You will find out soon enough. If he has indeed returned. The Dark One lives. You will- I really like this fellow here with his little squiggly mustache. I like- I like him. I'm gonna call him Fenton. And uh... And he- he's got his little- he's got his little squiggly mustache. Find out soon enough. This guy's got a little fake beard, too. This guy has a real beard, kind of. If he has indeed returned, this could mean trouble for the other one. Oh my god, it's Matt Ullman. We cannot be at our lord and master and keep waiting. Department for Meta-Human Control? You're the guys after Dr. Terawatt, aren't you? Oh, I can't believe... I just can't, I continually can't believe we found this. This is amazing. I wonder if he knows what, like, th what he's making. I wonder if he knows how good this is, or if he is blissfully unaware. Do you remember? Good evening, Mr. Buchanan. 
You. Where do you plan to move? Unit 205. That was trapped and abandoned by the department before the Great War. The Great War, everyone. There's so much going on in this review of Ready Player One. Maybe this. Maybe I spoke too soon. This might not be as good as Lord of the Rings, but it might be as. It might be better than the Hobbit trilogy. 2005. The FBI raided the warehouse, which ended in a large explosion. The fight isn't over for Dr. Nigel Gabler. He wants you back. He knows that you'll go down to the ends of the earth. Nigel Farage is upset with you, buddy. Based on the dark one, and god damn it, you need to find a way. So much action! Oh my god! The invasion can proceed faster. Full sail, boys! Good form, Colson! Wow, it's your so Oh, guys, it's me! Guys, it's me! I feel so represented! Yay! Disability victory! Um, so this is, seems like quite a fucking lot happened lot previously on DBZ. We're four minutes in, we've had like an announcement, we've had fucking just most of it has been like previously on... Okay, I guess a lot happened, I don't know, I kind of feel like I'm gonna get it. I kind of feel like I don't care and... And that's the end of the sentence. I don't care. I don't, uh... See. I'm mapping out the route to Unit 205. It's the last known location of Dr. Terawak. He's the only one who can rebuild the FTT. You're disabled, Joker! He defend off this invasion. Jack, no one has seen Dr. Terawak for years. Look year. at this fucking... Like, he's got his... 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 His Leela arm thing. Like, and it's just a power glove. And it's got like a fucking hyperlink up uplink to this fucking fatty in his gaming chair with his fucking Turtle Beach headphones and his aviators. Awesome. The terawatt for years. Anyway, here's here's this guy now. Uh, here's this sex offender. I haven't seen you in six years. In the hold up. Let's just say. I'm going through a bit of an infinite crisis. I got your message about the fuel supply you need. Oh, for, for fuck's sakes, can you just fucking get on with it? Why is Batman here now? It will take time to replicate more. This now is like, I don't need, this is at this point, if he's doing this as like a parody of this kind of thing, I, which I really doubt. But like, man, he's put in enough effort that I don't know if it matters. Like, shit, this is a lot. This is so much. There's so many locations. There's unironically more going on here than most Neil Breen movies. Like, he's got more real life action and shots than most Neil Breen movies. Now that we're on high alert here. No look, I'm trying to get it to a five, though. Found it. What? On the outskirts of the city, it's going to be tough to get to. The invasion's already started. There's so many cool action laser effects. We're gonna enhance. Hope to find you there, Doc. You're our only hope. Postman, yes. This is a review of Ready Player One. Are you just joining us? We found the unearth We've unearthed a new nostalgia critic. For anybody who's just new here, who's just joined, this is a this is a big this is a momentous find. This is quite something. We're finally into the review proper, five minutes in. We're done with all the recap and the fucking shoutouts to Doug Walker and everything. Now here's this Marvel intro. Every company needs a Marvel intro now, even Call of Duty has a Marvel intro. Oh my god, no, but you're not- you don't understand. MOSFET goes LAMAL part one. Look at part two and part three here. Okay, that's part one. Part two is like an hour and a half, and then part uh, three here is like two hours and 17 minutes. And- and this is just part one, everybody. This review that we're watching, this is just part one. Okay, no, it's an hour. It's one hour and three minutes, and then part- it's part three is, uh, like, over two hours. This is the- this is the real sequel 
to to boldly flee the famous to boldly flee this is the sequel to that apparently actually canonically they're this gonna go invade Molossia known as Gamma led a fierce army on a campaign to conquer great oh. walls Auto-generated text. We get Skaven LED, a fierce army on the campaign. All right. Uh, I really hope we could get some better uh, understanding of what the fuck is being said here, but all right. Man flies, the real world of Earth has become the ultimate creator. And with his human host, his plan began to be set into motion. Though only one stood in his way, the chosen warrior known as the Alborian contacted his army finest fighters in the multiverse, and upon that battlefield, the Great War began. Look at all of these awesome, cool people. And a misspelling of the word whence. All these cool, epic gamers. Why do we have Japan speak now? Why do we- why are we getting anime talk? So we're still not on to the review of fucking Ready Player One, by the way. We're still just doing- this is like the- I mean, this is unironically- uh, he loves Peter Jackson, apparently, in Lord of the Rings, so this is actually like the intro to, uh... Lord of the Rings, where you've got, like, Galadriel explaining the fucking- the war of the ring and everything, and... It's- it's, it's just that this is autistic instead. The recap after the recap! This is basically Kojima editing. Just imagine him using this footage while there's like text at the bottom that talks about nuclear pro pro proliferation. And uh, it only took me three tries on that one. Guy almost Rich, Rich Evans that pretty bad. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit Kojima esque. Magic missile! Magic missile! Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Magic missile! Magic missile! After a vicious war lasting what seemed like an eternity, the final blow from the Eldorian's mighty sword of light. Does none of this count as somebody in danger? Uh... Yeah, I mean, I guess so. Yeah, we're watching a movie. There's people in danger. People getting wiped out! So yeah, someone in danger. Uh, out of place adult interest would be so great right now if we get this bingo happening. I mean, I guess this one won't happen, probably. It doesn't look like it, but the out of light, like, if he just suddenly comes in with, like, and yeah, you know, I was reading P Proust the other day, and I felt as though, and this is Nostalgia Critic gives his two cents to, you know, uh, no Sangi needed yet, but he is there anyway, just in case. He watches. Banish Dablo and his minions back to their respective worlds, though not destroyed due to the mercy of the Great Warrior. For 15 years, the Dark One lay dormant to the realms of- An ominous past? I mean, he's got an ominous past of 10 years of making videos like this, apparently, so... Yeah, no, we're in for a fucking treat, people. I hope- I suggest you and your friends on Discord gather round and... Don't make any comments, don't- I mean, positive feedback only. You know, po positive comments only, guys, no haters. But just, you know, just be, whatever, just, t if you enjoy the video, just be like, hey, I really enjoyed this. Don't tell them why you enjoyed it. <laughs> Maybe don't elaborate, but if you're going to be leaving comments, you know, try to be nice. But, uh, you know, we don't want to spook them. We don't want them to run into hiding. But it's just gather around with your friends and do Big Jack Films Night, because I'm sure there's plenty of videos here that are going to be super great to watch. So prepare for evil's return. The Great Warrior went into hiding, retreating to the north, and hiding his powers away and sealing the portal to the multiverse from the outside world. Oh my god, even fucking Big Jack Film! We trusted you, Big Jack Film! We trusted you, Big Jack Films! We didn't think you would go to the fu- We didn't think you would vibe on multiverses, too! What a shame. Unaware that 
the Dark One has a portal of his own. Don't tap the glass. Which is to conquer the universe of space and time. Once. Yeah, I mean, maybe the reason why it's fucking three parts and they're all, like, multiple hours long is because we're seven minutes in and we're still not on the review. Make no mistake, this is, like, Origami Kingdom shit. This is, like, the same shit with a fucking, like, one of their videos where ha the first, like, ten minutes is just them sliding their PNGs onto the frame and going, Hi, everybody! This is me and my girlfriend, Mario! Marina, Marie, my girlfriend Super Marie, and 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 we're gonna we're gonna fight food fight, and 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 this is the same thing, but instead it's got a fucking jabroni and a Halloween mask. You're right. Now somebody checks me on it correctly. They say that's dig on multiverses. Get your zoomer slang out of that boomer quote. <laughs> yeah, no, because if if he'd said it was the guy who said it, right? I think it was the yo you you vi you dig on multiverse. If he had said vibe, that would have been too. No, yeah, that movie was written by eighty-seven year olds <laughs> pretending to be teenagers. <laughs> and you know your smegma really bad smegma yeah no that's a good it's a good film wish upon thank you for thank you for correcting the record there we're still doing this we're still not on to the fucking review yet we're still not there at last the bottom is complete. Our time has come. Two <laughs> times a day, nice, big, 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 doing why is it amish paradise now i know it's gangsta's paradise but uh, forever for me it's gonna be amish paradise they sell quilts at discount price i mean you can't beat that <laughs> i've heard they churned butter once or twice too <laughs> Why can't you people stop banging your action figures together? This is a Ready Player One review. I guess it makes sense, though. I guess, you know what? Shove all your bullshit in here. It's the perfect place for it. Just have Daleks and Lord of the Rings orcs and fucking... You can have old friends and new friends and even a bear. Uh, just have everybody in here. Whatever. It's a Ready Player One review. It's the best place to do it. You got a perfect excuse. <laughs> We might have to do a living in a user's paradise. <laughs> if I, I can maybe work on some lyrics for that. <laughs> I'll see it. I'll see about that. We'll see if we can get that going. When review? <laughs> it could be that part one is just not even the review. This could be like the first part of the the Red Letter Media discussion about the Star Wars Holiday Special, where they spend 40 minutes in a video called the Star Wars Holiday Special, just dodging the discussion of the Star Wars the Star Wars Holiday Special, and literally the entire video is just them talking about other random bullshit. And it's one of the best videos they've ever made. Uh, <laughs> that's gonna be like a year old as of I think 
this year? I don't know. I think it was 2014 that came out. But, uh, or 10 years old, rather. Uh, uh, this, uh, th this is, this is, this is maybe the whole hour-long video is just the lead-up to the review. This could all just be the fucking pre- the pre-gap. Our power is once again rising! It's victory! Oh, yeah, 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 voice changer, yeah, we got the- the Dark Bowser Jr. voice changer over here, you know, you, you gotta have a little bit of that. We have a new enemy in town. <sighs> Finally, it's end! Of all the last night of the season, the world will be stained with the blood of the innocents! Why the are we doing this? Does he think anybody gives a shit? Real and fictitious! March to the world of reality, to the city of the North and evil. I think he really thinks people give a shit because it's like, okay, if you're doing this as a joke about videos that would be like this, I have never seen a video like this. This is absurd. I mean, like, I mean, like, okay, you watch, like, a Linkara video, right? And it might have, like, lore to it. We always joke about Dark Phalus because there would be, like, Oh, it's me from the other dimension or something. But it was never like a fucking 10 minute intro about a dark lord from millions of years ago and a great war. And I mean, we were, we, I thought it was like a little bit presumptuous of this fucking user to be like, oh, yeah, I, I feel you, Peter Jackson. I really feel you. I know how you felt, felt making the Lord of the Rings. But I mean, fuck, I guess I do. I guess he does know how Peter Jackson felt. I guess he does know, because he's basically made the Lord of the Users. He's made the Lord of the Users. He's made the Lord of the Rings parody review that is just Ready Player One for some reason. I don't know why this is Lord of the Rings. This is so fucking stupid. I mean, at least have it parody something. I don't think Lord of the Rings is even involved in Ready Player One. Of all the fucking things that you could have done that are in Ready Player One, including just, like, parodying the plot of the movie itself for your review, that's the classic. M most of the reviews would do something like that. I feel like the Nostalgia Critic did that a lot. You could have done that, or you could have gone with, like, oh, Iron Giant was in there, let's parody Iron Giant. No, instead it's Lord of the Rings. Why the fuck was this here? It's, and you know why it's here. And this is, you know why it's here. Is this real footage from the movie too? Like this looks like the real orcs or I know it might be cosplay. I don't know. But you know why this is here. It's because he's just, you know, he's just a user and he needs to put his thing that he likes in the thing because he knows what it is. So, but like, and I'm fascinated by his creative choices here, where most of this seems to be like a ripoff of Lord of the Rings, but there's elements that are original. One of those being that, I guess this is supposed to be Saruman? Why is he like a, a fucking Skeletor zombie? He's like, Skeletor had flesh and this is like him before turning full skeleton. This is like Skeletor Origins. This is fan four stick Skeletor, basically. Uh, I guess. Why is he Saruman? <laughs> Right, user, keep your secrets. I like this look inside of like a, a fucking goatsy is what we've got right here. Somebody is really starting to vibe with the insanity. Ban uh, what it was, Banana Master in chat. You're you're really liking it. You're you're vibing with this. You're digging on multiverses now. That's cool. That's good. It's good to hear that. Here we are in New York. This is about to turn into Avengers Infinity War. 
Or 9-11. You know what? Fuck it. Mark off 9-11, everybody. You'll never see it coming. Mark off 9-11. This feels pretty 9-11 to me. Oh god, watch out for that building! Oh my god! Oh my god, you're going to hit that building! Oh my god! I would love to see the egg carrier smash into the CN Tower. I know that's not the egg carrier, but like... I just really wish I could see the egg carrier hit the CN Tower, and then all of the people around me are screaming, but in my head I just hear the fucking... I just hear that, that one song from Sonic Adventure, the... Hang on. Yeah, you just hear that one. Oh no! The CN Tower is gone?! You know? <laughs> Anyways, continue with the invasion. <laughs> is that fuck- is this just like the Slimer ghost or some shit? Well, bitches! <laughs> I just love the pan up and it's like this this smug guy. <laughs> like, mm, yes! Well, you'll have to go through me first! <laughs> I see, I understand, but you've. But that's. But your invasion, Armada, is not really an argument. Please debate me on my stream! <laughs> Oh, at least it has better effects than Godzilla Final Wars. <laughs> oh dear god, I can't believe this is not even the review yet. <laughs> Why do you people say he looks like me? Did... Oh, yeah, a little bit, okay. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, alright. It looks like me if I put on a little more weight, sure. <laughs> looks like me if I was smugly chuckling and my volume was muted. I know what all of this is! Huh? <sighs> I think we're about to get... We're almost to the real review now, people. We're we're through the 17 prologues of the Brandon Sanderson novel. We can get to the real story now. That should be it for now. Unit 205 is close at hand. Should be I mean, but let's be real here. There was him announcing, like, hey, thanks to everybody. And then there was, uh, then there was, like, this bullshit with the the previously on and then there was like five fucking ten minutes or something how long it was like five or six minutes of like the the great user war the thousand user blood war and now we're finally oh and then the invasion a and what was that what's the we're, the we're like four or five segments in on this fucking thing and 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 we're finally to the re we really are in a Brandon Sanderson novel. This exact location. And this guy looks effectively Mormon enough, so I guess that's fair. Oh, hey guys, what's up? It's Big Jack Films here, and oh, I didn't notice you there. I think it's about time I discuss today's current climate regarding movie-going experiences with crossovers and continuity. While crossovers for the longest time have been rare on film and television, we have to start at the very beginning. So is he doing all of this bullshit because of the movie having crossovers? Is that why this is happening? It looks like the mo it looks like his channel's always basically been like this though. I mean, it might have more things we recognize. That might be in here because it's Ready Player 1, but like the actual plot of this it might have less like daleks and bowser and shit but you know it's it's i think it would be similar I th it seems like it's been similar up to this point no not that far but when it comes to the first known crossover in motion pictures it was in 1910 with the german drama serial arsene lupin no relation 
Contrast Sherlock Holmes. Unfortunately, the serial- oh, It would have been really funny if you had the BBC, BBC Sherlock on there and it just went no relation. ...has been lost to time for the last 100 years and not much is known about it today. For animation, it was 1936's Betty Boop and Little Jimmy, which later influenced- So now we're into the actual review and I mean, at least it seems like it's a real video. Uh, his voice is kind of annoying, but- It's crossovers you know. with the likes of Popeye among many others. But it's in more recent years that the genre had a real mainstay and that mostly stem back to the comic Anima book industry, voice. which in the 2000s was adapted to film with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, for which crossovers and continuity-driven cinematic universes have become the mainstay in the box office revenue. I mean, Marvel made it popular, but it was fucking, it was like Kingdom Hearts and the nostalgia critic that made it happen, really. And what today's moviegoers are invested in even down to other studios catching up on Disney, with some being hit or miss, from the DCEU, the MonsterVerse with Godzilla, which even then stemmed from the original Toho series, and even... Oh god, the Dark Universe. Oh man. Ah! Oh, he's got the good clip. Alright, plus one for the good clip. Ah! Though, to be fair, it was arguably the classic Universal Studios monsters that began the concept of the cinematic universe with their horror icons from Dracula, the Wolfman- I mean, this is a lot less interesting now that it's just a review, though. That's the problem. So he's talking about, like, crossovers and stuff, sure. And here's Steven- here's Steven Gielberg. Uh, get- get to the point. Genius. Hell, when I was even a protege to Dr. Terawatt eons ago, there Steven inspired me in creating the FDT with the likes of Back to the Future and so on because of all of the amazing work he's done. He's just that imaginative. There have been some hit or misses in recent years due to his change in style since Saving Private Ryan, but most of the time his films are pretty much 100% perfect. And with the rise of nostalgia in the 2010s, and the crossover genres more embraced by the media, it seemed natural for the filmmaker to go back to his roots and make a loving tribute film to not only the last 40 years of film, but pop culture as a whole. And for our 10th anniversary special, I figured this movie was the perfect movie to cover that brings everything we've talked about in one big package. Which yeah, brings us to today's Lord of the film, Rings. and quite personally, is one of Steven's best films in a long ass time. That oh no, he liked it. That, of course, being 2017's game changing epic, uh, Ready Player One. Oh no, did he like it? Is that a joke? He must be joking, right? No, he's, he's kidding. This is gonna be a video where he talks about how it's bad, right? Based on the best-selling novel by Ernest- Oh no, oh no, uh-oh, 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 um, uh-oh. Chat members, I gotta be honest with you, I didn't- I literally did not even conceive of the possibility that he would have liked this film. Like, it never ever once occurred to me that somebody would have actually liked this movie and said that it was- Oh no, oh, uh-oh. This is not good, this is- I did not consider this possibility, this is a problem, this is a problem, oh no. Line, and much like most of Steven's best, the film follows a young boy named Wade Watts, played by Ty Sheridan, living in the futuristic world of 2045. A mere 23 years from now. In that time, the real world is a harsh place. Isn't it always been? With a he's gonna like it, isn't he? A more overpopulated dystopian look, zero to no outside social life due to lack of environmental conception. No way! I can't believe this! He's not gonna get away with this! I'm gonna make a whole user rant about how this guy liked this movie and that's bashing my opinion. And Squally would be so proud of you guys. And digital currency is the norm. Are we sure this doesn't take place today? Oh my god, it's so revolutionary. He's like a modern Hideo Kojima. This is incredible. I never I've never seen somebody But the only time Wade truly feels alive is when he escapes to the Oasis, a technological Just like me, am I right? <laughs> the only time I feel alive is when I'm on Twitter and Discord and talking to my friends and being groomed into 16 cults and having my identity stolen. That's so great. In the video game industry with an immersive virtual universe where most of humanity spends their days. Oh my god, I just, I just, I just, what do I do if I see this man in public? Oh my god. Where's the game? This stupid it. He got the. Well, uh, um, 
Okay, well, I don't get it, but I guess we're sus. Why are we sus? Is this like a sex joke? What is the... Transit? Why did he have to get transit to go to this random fucking place? This isn't a location. Is this like... What is this, like fucking Scott Pilgrim's house or some bullshit? I don't understand. That looks like you photoshopped that onto the wall, so it's not really there. So why did you have to get transit to go to this specific location? Uh, maybe we just don't get it. It must be a very, very secretive in-joke. In the Oasis, you can go anywhere, do anything, do anyone, I mean, be anyone. And the only li- In the Oasis, you can go anywhere, do anything, do anyone, I Is that the- yeah, that's the real old, uh, Goku and fucking Sailor Moon porn. And there's a- okay. Guys, it's Justin Chatwin, it's really him. I mean, be anyone, and- This guy's making sex jokes, and I don't think I like the it. The only limits are your own imagination- I don't think I'm down for that. OC fanfiction characters, to the magical worlds and characters of every IP in existence. That Warner Brothers copyrights could allow. Yeah, it's Sailor Moon and the Seven Balls or something, something like that. Yeah, it's it's a classic. I mean, it's like on VHS and everything. It's a whole real thing. It's a real product. But uh, I, I I just was not expecting that here. I was not expecting that here. And as such, an exclusive property and trademark of Warner Brothers Inc. The Oasis was created by the brilliant and eccentric James Halliday, played by Mark Rylance, who left his immense fortune and total control of the Oasis to the winner of a three-part contest he designed to find a worthy heir. He, he, he likes this movie, that's what we've discovered. I mean, he's not being cynical about this, he said it was one of Steel Steven Spielberg's best in years. And I just, I just, I just don't know, I just don't know what to say about that. Including um, half a trillion dollars! 500 billion for those who can't do math, but when Wades conquers the first challenge of the reality-bending treasure hunt, he and his friends, aka the High Fives, aka Spielberg Group Kids number 82, who are hurled into a fantastical universe of discovery and danger. Wow, it's like this movie is incredibly derivative and has nothing to say. Danger to save the Oasis from the capitalist evils of the IOI Corporation. The worst part is that the movie's better than the book. Who strike an odd resemblance like of the, the- the movie fixes a lot of the problems in the book, but it still sucks. Department of Meta Human Control, don't they? Ruled with an iron fist by its CEO, Nolan Sorrento. Played by is Human he... Control, don't you? Who strike so an odd saying... resemblance of the department- Why does it go black for a second? What the fuck is happening? resemblance of the Department of Meta Human Control. Why is there good good editing, great editing? So he's claiming that the bad guys from this Steven Spielberg movie look like his fucking like copy pasted guy in armor. This is like a character from Suburban Sasquatch. Don't don't even compare it to a real movie. Control, don't they? Ruled with an iron fist by its CEO Nolan Sorrento. Played by Ben, I'm gonna be typecast as every bad guy in every movie I'm in because I was in Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, as Imperial Director Krennic, and The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, you forgot he was in that, didn't you? Metalson. Who wants to cheat the games and gain control of the Oasis? I played college ball, you know? And assuming given the Oasis is the key to the planet's economics, you guessed it, take over the world. Of course! Uh my god, it's been literally years since I've heard the of course joke. No, that's not true. I think I actually referenced it like a week ago. God, I can never get away from this shit. I am never gonna get tired of that joke. I know and you of won't, buddy. It's up to Wade and our band of heroes and multi crossover characters to stop them and gain the Easter eggs to win the game, which may lead to fair play, or worse, war. So, what do I think of what is essentially the Where's Waldo movie? Well, despite better written multi- The Where's Waldo movie? What? What, because they're, like, looking for a guy, I guess? A lot of movies are looking for a guy. Yeah, that I love The Wizard of Oz. It's kind of Where's Waldo-ish in its approach, but, you know. First movies to come after, for a first try? This was pretty damn awesome and short. When I first heard the film's development with Steven Spielberg at the helm, it came at a very interesting time in the director's career when his dramatic historical movies were pretty much hit or miss. War Horse was a decent flick, and Lincoln really put me on a bit of a tilt head with him at the time, given I labeled it as his worst film for being so boring and such a slum to see. Yeah, I, I have a feeling you wouldn't have enjoyed a movie about Abraham Lincoln or anything like that. 
No, it didn't have enough action figures in it, did it? Didn't have enough Marvel and fucking action figures and Disney and big fight thing. Fight the thing. Smash! Smash the thing! And I know what it is, and it's smashing the thing! Yeah, Lincoln didn't have a lot of that. There was this one pretty explosive moment toward the end, I think, but... ...sit through that I actually fell asleep. The president has been shot. Where's the Iron Giant, though? I don't give a shit! This is gay! Seriously, Steven, how do you make a film so dry you can't even show the most crucial scene of the historical story? What? Yeah, it's almost like that was a fucking point. It's like, hey, let's talk, let's learn about more about this guy and not just... Like, the one thing everybody knows, you know, I mean... I was curious by the title alone, and when I heard it was essentially a video game movie, and considering video game movies at the time, this was pre-Sonic Mario and Rampage, folks. I was curious what it would entail, given Steven was a fan of video games, playing the likes of the Atari 20... I'm sorry, wait, go back to that? But I was curious by the title alone, and when I heard it was essentially a video game movie, and considering video game movies at the time, this was pre-Sonic Mario and Rampage... Oh, oh, pre these movies. So, uh, also pre Mario movie. Right, another great movie. Famously, another very good movie, just like Ready Player One. Yeah. Rampage movie? I know they made that. Was that good? I mean, I mean, uh, how do you fuck up a, ran a Rampage movie? I don't think that game even has any fucking fans. I've never heard- I've literally never heard anybody say that they're a really big fan of Rampage. Like, there's a bunch of games, they're- they're all pretty good, they're fine, they're good, I've played them. But I've never seen anybody who's like, really hot fucking ride or die for Rampage. Yeah, you know, Sonic, Mario, and Rampage, absolutely. I think this guy just likes movies with big apes. Folks, I was curious what it would entail given Steven was a fan of video games playing the likes of the Atari 2600 and the NES. Oh, Rampage had The Rock. Well, that's how you know it's a great movie, just like the Mario film and the Ready Player One film. All great films, according to Big Jack Films. ...with his kids in the 80s. Which, by the way, the Atari is all over this film, yet no cameo from the E.T. game. What the hell, Steven? But what the hell, trailer, Steven? Wasn't just and why didn't you make the joke about the spoon I forget what it was it was that nostalgia critic video no the hammer steel with his big metal hammer and 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 Doug just missed the, the fuck he missed the ball on that one he dropped the ball he just fucking dropped the ball on the hammer joke and that guy thankfully was there to point it out thankfully at that con just corner corner him for like 10 minutes and be like and you could have made a joke about the hammer it's weird that you never did yeah it's weird that you didn't reference ET it's just Steven Gielberg. Simple video game movie. This was something far bigger than expected, and seeing the likes of the Iron Giant, the Battletoads, the DCEU, and even a goddamn Gundam set to Valhalla's jump? The DCEU? And even a goddamn Gundam set to Valhalla's jump? Okay, so. Uh, okay. So. Uh, okay, so. Va so you got both of the words and the name wrong. You got both parts of it wrong. Um, you got the letters wrong on the first one. It was it's Van H Halen, not Val. But then the second one, you also s pronounced it as Halen. So that you just made a whole new band name right there. That's like a that's like the parody version of Van Halen from, like I don't know some some TV show. Fill in the blank. Um, but yeah, no, this is the, this is the consumer, man. This is consumer films. That's what we're watching here. Fuck the Lincoln movie. I don't need characters and plot and story and subtlety and quietness. I need loudness and spectacle and Gundam and things I know and music I know. And that's what makes a movie for me. It's quality filmmaking through and through. I quoted Leo DiCaprio's line in Django Unchained. You had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. I'm sure I he did. Yeah, you've you just jangled keys in front of a bunch of fucking babies. Yeah, of course you got their fucking attention. I was taken back since a multiverse story in battle had been a dream of mine since I was a kid. So to see Steven succeed to present that, I was hyped as hell. 
but also kind of pissed off for stealing my idea. I made my mind up to see it with Brad in the spring of- Oh my god, I'm sure you had a great idea about how all of your action figures could smash together, dude. You look like the type of guy you and your friend both had so many dreams about how you could smash all your favorite action figures together and get their ears to wiggle. And how could they have taken your idea? 2018, and needless to say, I was pretty damn excited leaving the theater while we were doing an opening night. Thank you, Steven, for making my dream movie, and fuck you, Steven Spielberg, for for making my dream movie! My dream movie. Wow, we found the people. We found the demographic. This is great. I've really mostly heard negative things from about that movie, because I don't watch videos by... Oh, I was just gonna say stupid people, but that's just mean. Uh, but, um, uh, well, uh, here we are, um... Movie! You stole my fucking idea! Okay, not- not entirely. Is the other guy Something jerking that off? It to go out of focus, God damn it. it was a really good breath of fresh air to get my creative juices going, and I knew my I- My creative juices going. What was creative about this? Yeah, you know, I could watch a movie like this and be like, yeah, you know, I- I could come up with a better movie than this, and that night I'd probably, you know, uh, yeah, no, I guess that's fair. Creative juice, I could see it, sure. I wanted to review this movie on a good special occasion with everything involved. Not only with things I've covered being incorporated Did into he curse? one movie, but being a multiverse movie with so much going on both epic and socially within the world, the concept was too good to pass up. Especially was with it? what's been going on on my end of things on this show. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, why would I look at somebody who makes shit like this? We can fucking put to bed the concept that this was a a joke, by the way. This is not this isn't this is not scaremongering. This is really happening. He he's wearing a trench coat and and fighting a Dragon Ball character in this frame. Yeah, no. I'm sure you loved the Ready Player 1 movie, man. I really hope you enjoy the second one with the prince fight. The fight with the seven different princes from the different part of Prince's career. Our recording artist formerly known as Prince, that Prince. That's who I'm just that's who I'm talking about. In the second book, there's a bat there's a boss battle with seven princes at once. And it's the most horrifically written shit. Where at one point the character just basically goes like, and then a bunch of stuff happened. It's hard to say. It's kinda hard to say. Uh, and then we won. Uh, it's great. It's really good stuff. Uh, I'm sure he's gonna love that show. You know. To explain this in a way, I have to go through my brief history with crossovers and how it inspired and sparked my imagination growing up. And that, of course, means we have to go back to the beginning. No! God damn it! We're not doing that. It's hard to pinpoint when. It yeah, he really is attributing a lot of this to Spielberg too. He's like, "Fuck you, Spielberg, for making my dream movie." This is just an adaptation of a book. He, he acknowledged that. So, I mean, like, your your dream movie was already a book, which was highly derivative and unoriginal. And according to that one Red Letter Media review, I think it, apparently it was a ripoff of a Danny Phantom episode, which is really funny. There's like a Danny Phantom, there's a single episode of Danny Phantom, which is apparently the plot of it is just, it's just Ready Player One. They go into a video game, they gotta find keys... There's a big bruiser tough guy character that turns out to be a girl. It's a whole thing. So, I mean, uh, Ernest Klein has some splaining to do. He needs to get in a room with uh, Butch Hartman and really hash it out. It was. Or, or maybe Randy Stare, I don't know. But the first crossover I ever saw was watching the 90s Spider-Man cartoon as a kid. In the episode The Mutant Agenda, Spider-Man is considered to possibly be a mutant and to resolve the problem ends up in an all-familiar academy. That would be interesting. He has an ASMR video with Android 18, huh? Big Jack film does? He, he does? I mean, I, I, I want to see more of this video, but I want to know more about his channel, too. This is, I mean, I have to, like, end the stream at some point tonight. I got food in the fucking slow cooker over there. But, uh, you, you know, uh, we're definitely going to look at this guy in the future at the very least. I mean, we, I got to see more of that. But of course, it's the home of the X-Men. Make one wrong move, 
please. And your shish kebab. Holy fuck! When I was a kid, huh. my jaw dropped having Loud no idea funny. that Spider-Man and the X-Men were part of the same universe. I didn't read Marvel comics or have any knowledge of Marvel as a whole and all the characters that shared a continuity. So for a young kid watching Saturday morning cartoons, this was a genuine shock, but frickin' awesome. The episode Frickin'. So not only had great chemistry with the characters, but also managed to combine the theme songs during action scenes and it works really damn well. Okay, r right. So there's been crossovers before. I like it when a crossover is good. I still want another DC and Marvel crossover. I think that would be neat if they could finally make one that's good and isn't awful and embarrassing. That would be neat. Um, however, uh, with the, um, you know, that doesn't mean that every time that action figures bang together that that makes a good film. So, I mean, I just, uh, I don't know if he's very discerning. Necessarily. Nice. I come to the peaceful countryside, and I wind up in the Pentagon. Okay, in this yeah, episode cool, of Power cool Rangers show. in Space, where... This... Now we're into Power Rangers. It'll be out when it's out, everyone. It's happened. You want rangers? You gotta go through turtles. I can't believe it, but I think they're... It's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles! Now, having watched the rain... Jesus Christ. I just... So yeah, this is why. This is... This is the demographic. I mean, we're finding... This is so interesting. We're finding out why people liked Ready Player One and how it became a phenomenon. And it's because, again... Stupid, idiot, retarded parents left their fucking children in front of a TV set with, like, a bunch of garbage playing. And they wound up kind of fucking broken. They just wound up loving watching colorful things hit each other. And, you know, and now we have a Ready Player One 2 coming out. And a sequel, and a fucking, a, a prequel book is coming out, too. There's another movie and a prequel book coming and I just, I just, I just weep for the fucking state of mankind. If I could cry, I'd cry for everyone. Da da da! Here since the Mighty Morphin days, reading Turtles comics and watching the movies, another jaw dropper was the epic crossover See through of the Bing Bong. Ranger team meeting the Saban variant of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from the Next Mutation series. While both teams have their common tropes intertwined, it was another awesome moment of my childhood to see this. Oh my childhood! Wow. Exposed to me from the general. There's another mother. thing the that crossed <laughs> over. That's awesome. Including cool. in the nerd's closet. And yeah, here we get this. If you missed this earlier, the Doug Walk, the real Doug Walker is here. The one and only Doug Walker actually makes a cameo for real in this video and says this guy's name and everything. And he's here. And this video is part of and canonically a a a, a, a fucking continuation of. The reviewer verse to boldly flee Kickassia suburban knights lore. I like the the order I put those in was like completely topsy turvy. Uh, the the lore of that. This is a follow up to all of that. So if you missed it, that's the caliber of video we're watching at this point in time. But y you know, fuck it. I I'm gonna grab a drink. Enjoy the nostalgia critic for a second. I'll I'll be right back. Covered it, who basically gave me my job. Including. That would be moi, Big Jack Films. You're welcome. God damn it, Nostalgia Critic! I thought you were stuck in the nerd's closet! I got out. Okay, well, this is hardly the time to reach out to me. The Earth's being invaded right now. <laughs> Maple leaves must be one hell of a drug to conjure that delusion up. There might be a Canadian PSA for that. Look out your window, Critic. That's just a typical Tuesday for Chicago, anyway. Yeah, so don't bug me again. I gotta finish this review before the reviewer versus in total shambles. Reviewer lore is still a thing? Ten years picking up your shit you left with the plot hole, Critic. Ten years. Your incompetence entering the plot hole and causing the Chat. shit reaction wave to happen through Yeah, it's Doug from Pop Quiz Hot Shot fame and all their other productions. Time is what allowed Gamor to be awakened after seven years of being sealed away since the Great War. Ironically, ten years since I started my. So now we have more context for this. I guess, in other words, this whole ten-minute intro about the Great War of the reviewers 
or whatever, and there was, like, an evil Dark Lord, and there was a whole fucking Gangsta's Paradise pa parody, and, and a bunch of bullshit, and that's all because of Doug Walker's actions in To Boldly Flee, I guess. Fucking show! Now some of us are still picking up the pieces you left in order to save the reviewer bars! When is it not a thing? Even down to the DCAU with World's Finest, and even the infamous episode from the short-lived season of Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo goes to the movies where the- Okay, I get it. There's a lot of fucking crossovers. Good. I'm so glad there's so many cool crossovers. If you remember a few videos back in Razor Blade's Magic Voyage review? I mentioned how I grew up with obscure animated movies. Oh, there's other people like you? We found a whole, like, fucking deep or fucking vein. There's, like, it's- there's so- there's not even just him, he's got friends that do the same type of videos. We fucking hit- we- we struck Atlantis, people! One of those was, of course, the infamous... Felix the Cat the Movie. I talked about that back in season two, so I'll save you the trouble and time on talking about it, and I would just recommend checking out that video. <laughs> but it's where the cat was out of the bag with my inspiration for dimensional travel. With all mixed in, the possibilities were endless for my utter love for crossovers, and combine that with the endless fan fictions on the internet. Jesus Christ! Yeah, you should buy a free. You should get a go get a free small burrito, buddy. Don't read more of this fanfic. Go get a mucho burrito, fresh Mexican grill. I just had a burrito. It was very refreshing. Um, all this cool Inuyasha crossover fanfic with The Walking Dead and fucking Sailor Moon. Smallville? Oh, hell yeah, dude. Fucking hell. Published 2003. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Crossover of Inuyasha and the movie Legend. Hell yeah, dude. This one being one of the best. I bring all these points up because Steven essentially created something I wanted to see that only existed in my imagination and certainly in others. And while I felt a tad cheated that my concept was stolen despite being based on a book, it was pretty much a test run for what could be done and the possibility. You now need to know if I am an Aerie or not. Oh, have I ever mentioned it on stream before? I don't know. I don't think I've ever... That's never come up before, actually. ...abilities no. of better and bigger projects in Hollywood, from character... No, I just found this cool image I like and decided to, you know, ma uh, spontaneously make a title that was a reference to that album that is that, that uh, image is a cover for. That's... It's completely unrelated, yeah. You now need to know. I think, I mean, I think that confirmed it if you had any doubt. Us, team ups, united villains, and a source of how to A new villains! Bridge over. I mean, in all fairness, this movie was practically the key to everything we've built today. It kind of reminds me of the first time Dr. Terawatt and I built the FDT. <sighs> it kind of reminds me of the first time I fucked your mom. I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> I remember it like it was today in a poorly rendered flashback. I mean, shit, back then I was just a kid and had been the doc's assistant for about a month or two. Most people thought he was crazy and sending me down the wrong path. So he actually made these videos when he was like young and he's just stayed making them and he still hasn't decided to, you know, do other things. Okay. Including- well, Whatever makes you happy, I guess. Here's Leon the professional. All people, my therapist. Don't ask. Sort of a Doc and Marty relationship between us. But it was in that time period I was telling the Doc of my fascination with movies and entertainment. And at that moment, the time had come to show me his greatest creation yet. And the only way I can shoot- Damn. Public Domain, Lucas, Ready Player One, King Kong. Okay, it's just everything. It's it's all of the things you know. Cool. The way I can show you guys this is from old archival surveillance footage from Evil Incorporated. You know, if it was socially acceptable, I would spend my entire life sitting at my computer playing video games and watching stupid YouTube videos. Um. And even I would say that this guy needs to fucking grow up and get a life. I'm sorry, this is just some real shit. This is a lot of fucking- there's so, so many things you know, dude. That's great. I'm so happy for you. you. You've seen so many movies, I guess. That's good. Uh, I'm glad you're such a fan of those movies, and that's uh, what you've dedicated your life to.
All right, now I need you to get behind that lead shield. Yes. I'm about to switch this on. You don't want to be out in the open when that happens. Yeah, that's how you wound up with that haircut. Look at that fucking thing. It's like an un it's like there's nothing on the sides and then he's got like a ponytail. Oh, I, f I hate this. That's Our the worst haircut. Activated. Temporal experiment number one. Engaged. Working. Ready. Jesus, Doc, you're a genius! It works! No, no, not yet. We need a stable molecular structure to test it first. To make sure it functions at 100% capacity. So, we need a stable molecular structure. Doc, you're a genius! It works! So that looks like this is just old footage of him. This is like him taking his own videos of him as a little a little boy. And like slapping them into this new production. This is very odd. But it also speaks to the whole thing we've been talking about, about like people who will just they'll get into their community on the internet and then they just will never grow up or evolve. And it's like you went from being a little kid who watched Nostalgia Critic to being an adult who literally hasn't even being like one of the last probably like hundred or so people on the entire fucking planet who still want to see more reviewer verse lore and 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 want to continue the saga of to boldly flee and that's just that's just sad Works. no no not yet we need a stable molecular structure it is it's boyhood in real life it, it took 12 years to make and it's like, I mean, it's a joke to be like, haha, it's better than Boyhood. I've never seen Boyhood. I don't know if that's a good movie. I've heard it's all right-ish uh, by people other than Red Letter Media. But, you know, uh, that is just a movie. I mean, the, the, the gimmick with that movie, if anybody's unfamiliar, was that it took them 12 years to make this movie and it, like, aged up with the actors in that time. So it was the actual actors aging over the course of 12 years. This is like that if it was real life, though. I mean, we're just seeing this guy. It's like the the metafictional version of that, where it's like it's just this guy making videos for like a decade since he was a little kid, and now he's an adult, and he's still making the same type of videos. And man, licking the window of self awareness. Test it first. Make sure it functions at a hundred percent capacity. Well, who would want to go? Well, the appropriate question, Jack, to ask would be, where do you want to go? With this, we could advance science and technology in ways that we never thought possible. We could send you to any fictional universe you can imagine. You could be our first fictional dimensional tra- This is so- I'm sorry, but this is so autistic. This is just the Chris Chan dimensional merge shit, but like if you tried to gussy it up and make it more of like a real thing. This is, this is, like, you might as well just have this super genius doctor be like, And here's the blowjob machine! It'll give you any woman you ever wanted, and she'll be real! And li like, okay, so this is just, this is, like, the term wish fulfillment, you know, gets thrown around a lot in, like, ri writing, like, oh, this is just you writing something that you wish you could do. Yeah, huh? Yeah. This is like My Immortal. This is the male version of My Immortal if it wasn't a fucking joke. This is just, I want to go hang out with Spider-Man and listen to MCR, I guess. Traveler. I mean, see, here's the thing. Teleportation, like moving within your universe, is relatively rudimentary. What did he say? Here's the thing. Teleportation, like moving within your universe, is relatively rudimentary as far as mad science goes. Just above that, you have multiversal travel, so traveling anywhere within the infinite- Why are you giving me the fucking scientific mumble-jumble fucking nonsense about this? It's not even scientific, but it's like trying to explain the fucking lore of it and like how it fucking works and like, Oh, it's actually simple. I don't give a shit. I'm like- I don't mean to be an asshole, but, like, even if I cared about this whole video, I don't think I would really give a shit about the the fucking metaphysical realities and, like, 
the hard science fiction angle of how I can go hang out with Blue's Clues. You know? Multiverse. Then, finding and locking in and specifying a universe that exactly matches a piece of fictional media that we have, that's the hard part. That's the genius part. You are welcome. Any universe? What are you talking about? Now, hold on a minute. Doc, hold the phone. Are you trying to tell me that this- It's a fictional dimensional transporter. FDT for short. Unbelievable. Well, I always knew it would work. I mean, like, something like this would be funny. It would be interesting if this was, like, a parody. If this was, like, a satire thing. Not even this video, but just this concept of, like, you can go into any reality you want, and then you could do something that's, like, Ready Player One, but, you know, like, a little bit more aware. I don't know. I don't know exactly what that would be, but you could do some kind of more intellectual thing. This is really just, he wants to just see his characters that he likes together, though. And that's the problem. I knew it would work when you had that vision in your head. Patient 92. But I was never able to harvest enough power or the right source to test it. Power is the key. Massive amounts of energy to accelerate matter to the speed of light while man- You're getting so much of this fucking backstory. Painting and- This guy has essentially grafted his own insane bullshit onto the fucking- like ready the 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 reviewer verse of early 2010s nostalgia critic fucking lore um and and it's like i guess doug just doesn't give a shit enough about that to 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 be like no don't do that i don't i disavow no he's just here he's cool with it i mean i also wouldn't care about the fucking sanctity of suburban knights lore but, like, you know, this guy has just kind of made his own whole thing. He's done his own thing with it. I mean, this is art. Make no mistake, this is art. Trolling. An extremely powerful gravitational force of space-time. We were never able to generate that kind of power. Until today. Whoa, this... this is heavy duty, Doc. This is pretty crazy. Precisely. Here, let me show you how it works. Pretty fucking wild, Doc. So, the power converter now operating at peak efficiency- Yeah, what do you mean, is this a review? Obviously, this is a review of Ready Player One. What the fuck do you mean? This is- what part of this doesn't scream review of Ready Player One? What part of the last five minutes that have been this idiot with a stupid haircut d fucking rambling and techno babble? Oh, you can go anywhere you want using the power of if it's close enough and you can blah blah blah. What part of that wasn't Ready Player One to you? I think this fits perfectly. Thanks to the uh, physiological makeup of the black hole energy. Uh, I, uh, well, I sent a drone into space to gather some black hole matter. Uh, please don't ask how that worked. Um, to channel energy into the converter here, which then releases several terawatts in a fraction of a millisecond, very small amount of time. Uh, electron acceleration then takes place here, and the result is the Jesus of Christ temporal displacement beam that you saw a few moments ago. The entire process is triggered with really just a, a few. Uh, codes and, uh, knobs and buttons, it's very- Can't we just know that it works? It's very user-friendly. I thought that power converter thing offered- Like, the audience is gonna be over here like, Um, excuse me, hang on, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense here, wait a second. I need more consistency in the plot of my- Not even the plot, like, the back details, like, technical element of my review of Ready Player One. I need more- this is just not fitting my- no, 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 the physical realities of this doesn't make any sense. It's just like all those fucking miscarriages that Spencer had. This don't add up. This ain't working. I need more detail about how this machine works. There's no sun! Give me more! Yes, but only for electricity to power it. The solar energy would have worked just fine if I could have placed the device a scant few inches from the surface of the bloody sun, but... Uh, instead, I've created, we're going to say similar conditions with regards to gigajoules here, uh, in the reactor using the black hole matter. The higher well, I rate- That's true, we don't know what kind of standard his audience holds him to. He might, he might have, like, very consistent lore for his film, you know? That's true. Uh, his, his various reviews, his big jack films that he makes. 
Uh, it would be so funny if his name wasn't even Jack. It's just like Toby or something. But Big Jack Films is just the name of the company, you know, like. Raise the cadmium rods, the more energy I release from its core. Jeez, Doc, you've got a gold mine here. <laughs> a, a gold mine? Ah, the world. Yeah, this sure is a gold mine, isn't it? Worlds, Jack. The fictional worlds are everything. I created this machine so that we could advance our technology far beyond. So any this is science, Chris Chan. Thing we could hope to create for millennia. This is Chris Chan if he had time. You can assist me. Oh, Chris Chan has nothing but time. This is Chris Chan if he had a brain. If you like. Eh, might as well. Nothing else better to do. All right, now take the Inuyasha DVD and insert it into the <laughs> Type in whatever timeline you're choosing. Sure thing, I'm on it. Time complete. Yeah, just take this Inuyasha DVD and go fuck yourself, kid. Please insert media device into the launch slot. Well, the slow cooker's not rotting the food. The pork might be getting like a little, a little tender, but it'll be fine. I mean, it's it's on low, but we are only halfway through this, <laughs> and we've been skipping around a little bit. Accessing data from World Two Six Ninety Two with launch codes ten sixteen twenty zero zero. Time set. Energy levels at ten rads. Stabilization co-effective. Forty three. 16 rats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody who's just new here, this is part one. The other two parts are, uh, well, part two is one, an hour and three minutes. So it's a minute shorter. Part three is two hours and 17 minutes, by the way, though. So, like, it's, this is just not even fucking, this, we're not even, I don't even think we're, like, a quarter of the way through at this point. Technically. We still have so much more to go, people. This is the Lord of the Rings of Ready Player One reviews by autistic people from Canada. So, I mean, it's very specific, but for what it is, it's the Lord of the Rings of that. 73 reds! OPP, open up! Sheriff's office! Put it down, put it down! We're the real police here. Freeze! OPP! Oh, the official party poopers. It's actually in Ontario, too. Jesus Christ, what's a goddamn reaction? Yeah, we're turning it up a little. We're tur turning it a, a little faster now. Sure. Get back, Jack. You, shut it down, now. That will not be necessary. Who, who's the German? Oh my God, it's Charlie. Everyone, get out. We're in the middle of an extremely dangerous experiment. <laughs> oh, come now, Doctor. I have no need for this reactor. I'm merely here for the boy. Hey, sir, didn't you need us because a mental patient had access to a radioactive explosive? Only if the boy escaped. Yeah, Steampunk Skrillex is, like, a little too good for this. I mean, everybody else is, like, really bad. I mean, obviously he's not that great either, but he is trying. He feels like he'd be up to par with, like, the people in an actual Nostalgia Critic type of video, as opposed to whatever this is. Um... Everybody else here is more on, like, the high school version, uh, the high school play version of a Nostalgia Critic skit, y you know, uh, which is really saying something. What do you want, old man? You have no authority over me! You discharged me yourself! Oh, yes, but I was mistaken. Look what do you mean, where is the review, chat member? What part of this is not Ready Player One review? Come on now, chat member. This is a very good review of Ready Player One. Well, I think it's on you that you don't see that. It's your reports. My employees told me that your psychosis was something they'd never seen before. Almost inhuman, in a way. What are you talking about? We need to do a bit more studies on you, my boy. A bit more. Well, the accent started as, like, German a little bit, and now it's just become vague foreign guy accent. Interesting studies. I want you to measure your next actions very carefully. Why does this guy get, like, the coolest outfit, though, too? He also has just unexplainably, he's got super cool, like, Barrett gauntlets. And he's wearing, like, the fifth Doctor's outfit, too, a little bit. And it's not exactly, it's the same type of jacket, though, a little. Uh, why is this guy, like, the most extra guy? <laughs> He's the only one that can act. He's the only one that has, like, a real outfit. It looks like his costume has some effort put into it. He's... Why is he... I mean, I kind of hate that he's here and he has nothing to do with this fucking review. 
But he's like the best part of it, technically. Well, to hell with that. I'd rather take my chances in this pool, to be honest. I won't fall for your lies as my parents did. Squish it. <laughs> Well, Jack is the little boy who just hit people with his his Star Wars kid stick uh, a little bit um, through a video feed, of course, and uh, then he uh, then he uh, grows up to be the guy with the fucking Getty Lee '70s haircut. So. <laughs> Boy, jump for your life! Yeah, no, I mean, this is absolute gold, this video. This is like, this is a real gold mine. Somebody, like, Postman was like, there's a lot of symbolism here. It's a very abstract review. I mean, this is a, this is a fascinating piece of art. I mean, I'm not even fucking playing. I, I don't think this is good, and I find it annoying and cringy. And as a YouTube video, I take offense but, like, for a, a weird piece of fucking outsider art that's, like, a fucking strange continuation a decade later of some shit that was annoying back then and is only worse now and has aged poorly and this is, like, so much more... I just said it, but it's so much more extra than any of those movies ever were, even. Like, they didn't have these long segments that would be not even related in the slightest to the actual plot. They never did that. They didn't have just, like, a huge chunk of the movie be set with, like, Doug Walker and his troubled past before he met the fucking other reviewers and shit, you know? Like, it would be at least plot relevant. Like, they, the pacing, I can't believe it, the pacing was better in the Nostalgia Critic videos. But, like, this is, like, a weird pastiche of this guy's, like, imagined, like, fan fiction life using his own footage of him as a little kid mixed with all of this real-life, like, modern-day shit actors he brought in. He probably paid people for this. And, I mean, yeah, this is, this, this is fascinating. Nothing. Whatever else you gotta say about it. This is a year old as of tomorrow. Depending on your time zone, it already is. But happy new, happy fucking year anniversary, which is the tenth. This is the eleventh anniversary now of Big Jack films, because this video is a year old. This was the tenth anniversary. That's how numbers work. So there you go. You even got a little lesson today in math. <laughs> I mean, you can't even say that no effort was put in. He's got weird footage of, like, explosions from, I don't know, like a fucking officer's dash cam or something. And then there's, like, there's, like, riots going on. What have you done? I could have stopped the boy! Stopped him? You would have killed him! The boy was a I love that cinematography is just dead. You, you guys enjoying the editing method of like, why, like, cause why is this... What, why is this Freddy got fing- sorry, Five Night at Night- why is this Freddy Five Night? Why, why are we doing like Night Trap jumping around between cameras? Why can't this just be shot like a real thing? Like, is... I forget, because it was like 40 minutes ago. I forget how this was all framed and how this started. But, like, I don't think it involved the main guy, like, putting on fucking tapes of his old days, of, like, his childhood, so that he could watch them and remind himself of his past. This is, like, his memory. He's just, This is just how he sees his memory. Which is fascinating, isn't it? Like, this is how he chooses to contextualize his own character's memory. It, through video feeds. Through, like, a TV format. Isn't that interesting? Isn't it? And, 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 so you, instead of getting, like, actual shots, we just get this, like, 
It fucking cut from one shot to another. Pass it to me! You have three seconds to tell me where he is. Why? What possible use could you have for an average boy? Besides, he's right where he needs to be. His destiny. I work for the United Nations government, and I'm placing you under arrest, Mr. Tedawat. And I am confiscating all of your technology for military government research. Wait, you're an undercover agent? There's no point, Gabor. This was all a prototype. It only worked the once. If you tried to repower, the steel structure wouldn't hold for I really, the- so, I really hope somebody destroys the Neil Breen laptop here. I hope this isn't like his real laptop. I hope somebody like smashes it or throws some water on it or spills coffee on it and passes out or something. Trip. No more books! We'll just have to put you on the payroll to build me a new one. I, I really wish you would just give up on the Sorry, accent. Gabor. But all the files and supplies that you need are located on this drive. Jack warned me about you. And it looks like he was right. Hey, yeah, get yeah. on. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gabor. So he's got a Duracell fucking flash drive, and he even put in the little Duracell jingle. I, I'm i amazed at the effort that did go into this. Jesus. But all the files and supplies that you need are located on this drive. Jack warned me about you. And it looks like he was right. Gabor. Hate to say it. Well, that's a lie. I love to say it. I've got other plans. Yeah, that's all the files are under four gigabytes. I mean, this guy, you know, he... This is back in the era where I think that would have been an acceptable uh, fat flash drive size. You know, that's fine. No! Darkness, damn you, light child! Oh my god, all my favorite things are real! I never have to grow up! I love you, Kagome! Is it over yet? Chat member, I want you to remember again that this time here, this, this bar here, represents part one of three of which part one, two is the same length and part three is over twice the length. So this is like, we're maybe an eighth of the way through? Maybe? I th somewhere around there? Like, uh, we're around an eighth of the way through. I think. Technically. <laughs> Well, we're not watching the other parts today, but we will. We will. Dog? Hello? Somebody better make sure these things are- just run like a download the whole channel thing. One of those fucking programs that does that. Plugins, whatever. Just do that, download every video, and make sure that they're safe somewhere in case this guy, you know, doesn't enjoy having, uh, users. Doesn't enjoy being a user. You that boy! Yeah? Did you emerge from a shining light just now? Yeah. Who are you? Uh, forgive me for not giving you thy name. I am called Cedric, the wizard. The highest rank of the great council of all wizards brought the great ones. I wear rubber gloves. I am a friend of your professor, Tanawant. Great wizard he is, oh, full of magic. He informed me of your arrival ahead of time. No, it's better than nothing. It's freezing out here. Where am I? You are where you need to be. Eldorian of the Light. Your destiny. Oh my god. He's really tried to like... What? He's still got his fucking stuff on the wall back here, but he's trying to use this old footage of him as a kid. I, I, I'm, I'm in awe of how much him as a kid is playing into this right now. Come with this me, boy. This insane review of Ready Player One, by the way. Like, if you've got here in the last, like, half hour? Full hour? I don't know how long this has been. It's been so much of this video so far. Has been n nothing at all related to Ready Player One. And I gotta be real, the parts where he talks about it, not the most interesting. So we're, we should be happy. I mean, there is the fact that he apparently likes it, which is funny, but... You know, yeah, he likes Ready Player One, and most of the video is not even fucking about Ready Player One. Good, great stuff. There's much to learn and much to see. 
You have traveled far. You shall now be entering a whole new set of worlds. Come along. We have ways to go. That's him as an adult. That was him as an adult playing his child self because he didn't have footage of him as a kid lying in the snow so he would had to pretend to be him as a kid as an adult. So he, you know, he he's in this similar outfit. It might even be the exact same hoodie because who knows if he's even grown out of his hoodie from back when he was a kid. And now he's, uh, he, he just looks a little bit more like Shrek. Oh my god, I think I saw Super Mario there! Oh my god! Discs we used to travel to the different multiverses in Unit 205. I'm closer than I thought. Marvel. Hogwarts. The Mushroom Kingdom. Ooh. Narnia. Oh. Neverland. I'm, I'm sorry, this is just so pathetic. This is like every joke anyone has ever made about these types of fucking people. Like the crying Star Wars degenerate. The fucking people that just. And I. It's like. It's like. It's like the whole, the, the entirety of, of, of Red Letter Media exists prob probably because of the, this type of consumer and this whole culture of, like, just Star Wars remake, fucking Terminator remake, Transformer remake. You know what this is, guys? You know what this is? Just these fucking people that can't just let their fucking thing that they like just either stop happening or, I don't know, they can't find anything new. I mean, it's all franchise fucking blockbuster shit. Go watch an indie film. I mean, at least watch a movie that doesn't have Transformers in it. Fucking try watching Lincoln again. Maybe you might feel something that isn't, I know what that is. Maybe you might feel something if you watch a movie that doesn't have explosions. Just try it. It might be a real fun experience. I don't know. Well, I hope to God uh, that you're still here with us when the battle comes. Star Wars! People that can't put their fucking toys down. 40 years or something of just people that can't put their fucking toys down. Just like... I, just... We need another Star Wars. I need more. I need to see the Millennium Falcon again. You don't understand! You don't understand! It flies now! So, yeah, I've been wanting to talk about this movie in more depth for a while since my opening night review. What is love? <laughs> and afterwards, do God, he's pogging at this fucking movie. I've been talking about this movie in more depth for a while since my opening night He is the consumer that watches Ready Player One and pogs. We're finally back to the review, by the way. I feel like I've taken acid. What the fuck is love? Night review. What is love? And afterwards, doing research on the project, I found some interesting insights, and for this review, I actually took time to read the book. My thoughts on the book, though, are complicated. As of late, whenever I see Steven adapt a popular book- I don't like reading things. It hurts my brain. Jaws onwards, he always waters down the source material to be more family-friendly. This goes for the likes of Jurassic Park, which I'll talk about in the legacy reviews down the line. <sighs> However, However, reading the so book excited. Ready Player One, I can actually see better improvements in the movie in comparison to the book, which is much better executed because when you get down to it, along with its appropriately titled sequel, Ready Player Two, the books are kind of awful. No. <laughs> Well, okay, all right, uh, all right. At least he has. At least he isn't completely insane. He might like the movie, but let's not go completely insane here. <laughs> That's great, though. 
Uh, even this guy doesn't like the book. <laughs> understand the concept at the time being a major bestseller, and if you like the book, you'll like the book. But the book feels really self-indulgent, and more like an unclever fanfiction journal written at Comic-Con. Hey, check it out, nerdfight. The character- And you're telling me the movie doesn't? ...are mostly jerks and unlikable, and the story's point of view comes off as more aggressive towards the female demographic, and stupid references to current events and pop culture. While the concepts on the page sound spectacular, and even showcase probably a bigger budgeted production that Warner Brothers can definitely not afford, especially right now, <laughs> times it felt off to read, and kind of uncomfortable with character personalities. However, believe it or oh, not- you didn't like Wade Watts' lubed up sex doll, I guess, huh? The second book, Ready Player Two, is even worse, and- Oh, but it is, though. Even mentions on countless occasions the almost self-aware references to Sword Art Online. Alright, I mean, like, yeah, at least he doesn't like the fucking books. <laughs> this is all just stuff I can agree with here. I mean, I don't think the movie's, like, that much better, but... Yes, Sword Art right. Online. Speaking of which... Well, haven't you guys re-watched Sword Art Online recently? Come on, people. Why are we doing this now? Doff creator Rike Karwada's conflicting manga and anime series. And tell me this doesn't sound familiar. Set in 2022, my god, we really are in the future. A young kid escaped. So yeah, it's a ripoff of many things. I know, I'm aware. Before reading the book, and it's hard not to, honestly. You could even repackage Sword Art Online as Ready Player One, the animated series, and it's practically the same thing. Now, there have been hit or misses with the anime, but for the time, I did enjoy- Yeah, he could mention Dot Hack, actually. Where's that? Why is he talking about this garbage? Like, there's another- it's so funny that there's another show that's basically the same plot as fucking Sword Art Online, but nobody cares about Dot .hack even though it was, like, better. Uh, this show became a huge thing even though it was fucking trash, apparently. I- what- I played a little of the P the first PS2 game for sort for for Dot Hack and it was really interesting. Why don't why don't why didn't that one get popular, you fuckers? Oh yeah, for what Talk about that one. It's the same thing. Yes, and also that theme song still kicks ass. And while it plays a major part in the sequel book, the first story and with the movie, however, kind of just being that with the story mixed with Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And there's a few reasons for it. Oh my god, please just stick to talking about this movie. Stop talking about every other movie and anime and your character's backstory. Can you just stay on this movie for like a minute, please? Now, I am no stranger to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. It's practically one of my favorite childhood movies, and it's obvious and clear that Ernest was inspired to a degree by the writings of Roald Dahl's book, but more so the classic 1971 film starring Gene. I mean, it's like, it's, it's not even... This is a great pause frame. This is a classic. It's not even, this is, this is, this is, so it's like a little distracting. This is our response to this whole stream. <laughs> this whole video is just, <laughs> oh, really? Oh, is that so? <laughs> Please tell me more. Um, but it's like, it's almost like it's a, it's, it's fucking stupid to even point out like, oh, it's obvious that he was inspired by this and that. Like, yeah, yeah, he's. He was he, he was the thing was he just really wasn't inspired I don't think and so it wasn't that he was inspired by any one thing I think it's just that it was a a dearth of inspiration it was just a complete lack of creativity so it became this kind of generic hodgepodge of like like 700 different fucking movies and TV shows and shit and so that's why you are reminded of better things like this that kind of give you similar feelings to what he's trying to go for, but execute them well. And there's a reason why this is a timeless classic and fucking Ready Player One. I mean, unfortunately, it might stick around, though. I mean, who am I to fucking say? The people have some pretty bad taste. Wilder. Which, funny enough, Steven wanted to originally play Halliday. No joke, much like Jurassic Park and Jaws when the book was a hit in 2011, Steven was right on board to direct it, and seeing the parallels to Wonka, wanted Gene in the main role of the creator of The Oasis. Thank God it wasn't the Johnny Depp version. Yeah, this is 1.2 speed. Uh, it's, it's, he's, he is a little extra germ-y today. He's a little germalicious when he talks this fast. Mr. Wonka, I'm Violet Beauregard. I don't care. You're channeling a candy maker crossed with Michael Jackson. <laughs> this is not what Roald Dahl wrote, Tim. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. But for God's sakes, Chris McGlover even knew this was bad. That's actually the sewer line. <laughs> However, due to the still develop- oh, man, a reference to one of those movies. That's so great. I always try to forget that those existed, but they sure- 
They sure did exist. Bring technology and Stephen working on other projects, Gene never got to give such a performance due to his death during the Great Hollywood Death Plague of 2016. Though, using the song Pure Imagination in the trailers, it's clear they pay tribute to the late actor in some way within the film. But Are we really allowed to use that song? I, from... Uh, okay, I guess. As a film in of itself, adapted- It uses a lot of shit. It's just like, that's a song for a movie. To use that? I didn't even know that they used that as, like, the theme song. I mean, it's not the theme, but, like, the trailer song? That sucks. You can't even have your own fucking music for your movie. You, you gotta get people in with, remember the, the fucking song you liked from this other better thing? Well, watch this one! It doesn't have it, but watch it! It's great! From the book, the movie is actually a better, more fun story to tell, and that's no doubt thanks to Steven's input as a writer and director. Filled left to right with pop culture references and easter eggs, impressive merging of worlds and its effects, a decent score, and a great cast of leading characters. Now, I should say that the majority of the characters are pretty generic and cliché, again somewhat inspired by Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, with Wade Watts being our Charlie Bucket of the movie. A young kid who seeks something more in himself, and his attempts and achievements to be a champion of the game. He kind of reminds me of Ash Ketchum in Pokemon, but has a lot going for okay, him from a typical player obsessed with the makings and past of the game's development, but its creator for ultimately being a hero and savior of a dystopian future, desperate for hope and prosperity for a brighter tomorrow. God, he has a huge nose. His avatar is also pretty cool, going by the name Parvasol, going for a mix of Jack Frost with some Parsifal, you fuck, get it right. Some anime goth and 80s rebel punk attack. I know this shit better than you do, and you like it. ...in his outfits. I swear, half of his wardrobe came from the fucking Breakfast Club. Should I go more... Thriller? Well, maybe- Well, yeah, of course it came from the Breakfast Club, because this whole fucking- I- I- I mean, I remember that the fucking book- I mean, I admit, I haven't seen the movie outside of just a lot of clips and stuff, so it might be a ton better than the book, but, like, the book has parts where he just- especially the second one, where they're on a ticking clock- and, and no one other than Ernest Klein wrote the story to be that way so that they were on, like, hey, everyone's gonna die if we don't go do this thing. And instead of doing the thing, they just dick around on, like, the fucking John Hughes planet hanging out in Breakfast Club or whatever the fuck. I don't remember if that was a John Hughes one, but, you know, they were on his planet, goddammit. And, 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 like, yeah, he really likes re-watching Family Ties for the 700th fucking time. He really likes fucking knowing what that is in Growing Pains, because there might be a clue to Halliday's puzzle or something. So of course the, the, the wardrobe is filled with fucking references. It's more than the Breakfast Club. Clark Kent glasses. They hide your identity without changing your look. Okay, us nerds own the fact that nobody can see past Clark Kent's stupid fucking glasses. Somebody freaking notice her! You're not even trying to be civil about it anymore, Warner Brother. I get it, you like Nostalgia Critic. Can, can you- it's just so funny to me, like- is there's a lot of fucking content creators on the internet. I I mean, you really still just watch Nostalgia Critic? I'm sure he watches other stuff, but I don't understand how somebody couldn't have grown out of that. That's just amazing to me. I mean, he was younger, clearly, when he was getting into this whole thing than I was. I was like 15 or 16 when I was into Nostalgia Critic. Uh, sometime around like 2010, 2011. So, I mean, like, I mean, maybe that, that, that was the right time for me to get in and then somewhat quickly get out. But this, this, this guy got in and never realized that he was an, an annoying, cringy idiot. He never realized that. And he still just likes Nostalgia Critic and references him and makes videos that are part of the universe and the lore of To Boldly Flee. You, you can't make this up. But he did. His favorite quote was from Superman. Some people can He's reborn. He's a true Douglasist. It's a simple adventure story. I do not want another single pop culture reference out of you for the rest of the trip. Don't even bother, Stark. This whole movie is a pop culture reference bukake. He falls for the typical cliches of solving the clues, getting the girl, and fighting the bad guy. And while generic and kind of outdated, not gonna lie, I kind of miss in movies nowadays. I know we're living in a more progressive time, but there's nothing wrong with paying homage to the classic hero tropes of the past. The movie is already. I love having white people in the lead. With nostalgic shit, so you might as well add such nostalgia and character development. I mean, come on. I can't the be the movie only is dripping with nostalgia, so you might as well just have a throwaway love interest who's there to, ser you know, serve the, the male lead, basically. You might as well. Who's noticed Hollywood's complete disbandment of the classic hero archetypes. I mean, I do love that this is, like... 
you know, yeah, there's something to be said for, like, the way movies used to be or something, but this is basically asking for this movie to be, like, even more derivative. Please be more like things I've seen before, and no. Please, it wasn't enough- the, my big critique about Ready Player One, really, was that it didn't have enough things that I knew and recognized from other things. That was the problem, really. The Luke Skywalkers, the Rodney Copperbottoms, the D'Artagnans, the Robin Hoods. Where are the heroes of the past to lead us to a better future? Where are all the whites? We could definitely give them different shades of gender, race, and- but the Oh, okay, all right, all right, all right, we're cool, we're cool. Personality is just nowhere to be found nowadays. It's mostly depressive saps that you'd see in a Frank Miller comic. And quite frankly, guys, I'm getting kind of sick of it. But for what he's given, Ty Sheridan was picturing I a lightly cast- you know, I see what he's getting at. I don't think he is- It's, just fu it's funny need to assume he's going all critical drinker on us but no i mean yeah you know yeah it's nice to have it's like why people like luffy he's just optimistic in the face of all these people that are kind of you know angry and edgy and he's just like yeah this is awesome this is great let's go let's go do let's let's go eat some meat and stuff yeah friendship Call, but has had a decent so, career. I mean, yeah, you know, there's there's so, there's something to be said for that. He's not he's, he's got he's got a bit of a point. You know, both fine. before and after this film, being James Marsters replacement in the X Men movies is Cyclops. The other he's movie with a thing on his eyes, providing motion capture for a few games in the sports genre, such as Madden 21. And considering how much motion capture he probably learned in this movie, it's pretty cool to see him do that career path as a side job. It's not about winning. It's about playing. Olivia Cook plays Samantha. Cook. AKA Artemis. In the Oasis, Artemis is one of the most powerful players in the game with a lot of weight to carry, not just playing the game to survive. I just love how like they they have the ability to look like anybody in this universe. And they choose to be like what is she? She's like a shitty Navi kind of like, you know, she's green or whatever and she's got like red hair. She looks like a a horrible Bajoran. Uh I don't know. And then he's like a terrible fucking anime blue guy. I, I don't know. They, they're both really ugly to me. Uh, and they could just be like Solid Snake and Meg Griffin if they wanted to be, I guess. But they choose to be these like horrible create sim characters. I, I don't think they're very good. I but turns out to be part of an underground resistance to the real world against the IOI Corporation. Horror Bajoran. Ah, uh, yes, Ben Middleson once again fighting another rebellion against his tyrannical empire. Keep that tight casting going, Hollywood. Fuck the media! Blind, deploy the garrison! Now, while there were some I mean, shouldn't you want more things that are like the thing you know, though? Set runners up from the likes of Ellie Fanning, considered for the role? I mean, hell, what's Anna's- Ellie Fanning. So for Rob doing nowadays? I think Olivia Cook was a decent choice for the role of Artemis. Being considered for the role? I mean, hell, what's Anna Sofa Rob doing now? Anna Sofa Rob- Can you fucking just try to say that- You put so much effort into doing all your fucking skits, try to say people's fucking names right. Jesus nowadays. Christ. I think Olivia Cook was a decent choice for the role of Artemis. And much like her male co-star, has had decent work before or after in Bates Motel and the recent House of the Dragon. On top of that, her avatar, I'm not gonna lie, is pretty kick-ass and kinda hot. Especially in both- Oh, whoa, she's so hot. Dance scene and the iconic- You know what's really funny? They're making a fucking remake of Tomb Raider that's coming out on, like, well, not remake, but, like, it's a remaster kind of thing. Like, a night dive, sort of. I think it might be them doing it. Um, it's coming out on February 14th, Valentine's Day, aka Thanksgiving. AKA Halloween, whatever I choose to call it when I forget to call it Valentine's Day. Um, <clears throat> it's just really funny that the game Notorious for having Big Booby Lara Croft Lady is going to be, um, is going to be coming out on the day when a lot of people won't have dates. So good for, that's good, it's cool, that's good. Bike from Akira, which was nice of Steven to include given he's a fan of the 1988 classic. And God, it's so surreal to see that thing in a live action movie after years of hell trying to get an actual movie off the ground. Funny, since when the original movie came out, Spielberg and Lucas stated the film was unmarketable at the time and that the he West- He says he thinks she was well cast, but doesn't say why. How is this a review? I mean, it it's not a very good review, but he's talking about a lot of the meta elements surrounding the film, but he's not really talking that much about the film itself. He's talking more about the book and, like, stuff that the film was based on. I mean, it's a fucking three-part review, though, so I guess, we're, I guess we're just getting into it here. You guys know about the, like, 13-hour retrospective on, uh, on from Persona 5? Uh, and, and, and it's literally just 13 hours talking about one character from Persona 5. 
And the channel has other ones, too. Like, there's a Ryuji one that I think was, like, nine hours long. I can't even fucking believe that. Apparently, uh, that video, I think we need to watch that eventually, because apparently that guy's, like, a big-time male feminist, too. So that's good. That's a good, that's a good time. Uh, but yeah, thir I think it, it was either 11 or 13 hours. I think it was, thir well, no, because there is a time limit on YouTube. So I think it was 11 hours. I think it was ele 11 hour fucking thing. This yeah. was not ready for an animated film like this. An opinion which no doubt challenged the West and potentially sparked the big bang of the anime boom we see today. Despite what big Hollywood executives tell you of how animation is still aimed at fucking children. Our fans and our audience. Why are you showing... A Amy Schumer there what says, the put their kids to bed at night after watching Pinocchio or Dumbo or Little Mermaid they're probably not going to tune into another animated movie mm -hmm. they they want something Boy, to put back to Artemis as she joins oh, okay that's fair made on his journey the two of course become star Why was Amy Schumer there across lovers I will admit though her motives in fighting IOI is kind of generic my dad died in a loyalty center he borrowed gear he built up debt he moved in with the promise of working I mean, out. Almost everything here is generic. It's all things you've seen before, either uh, either blatantly or like repackaged shit you've seen before. But he never did. I, I just raised his living expenses, then he got sick and he couldn't afford to get out, and then he died. But again, I'll let it slide because I kind of like that cliche of the daughter avenging her father's death. Because hey, everybody can get Princess Bride syndrome. You! It's like he hasn't acknowledged the fact- he keeps acknowledging all the tropes that the movie is, is. Like, all it is is just a bunch of shit from other things that they put in here. And- and almost nothing original. And he- he's, like, pointing out a bunch of these things that are, like, from other shit. And, like, oh yeah, this is similar to Princess Bride. This guy reminds me of this and that. And- you could do that and maybe point, maybe recognize just for a second, just real quick, be like, oh yeah, no. Yeah, this whole movie is a sham. This entire thing is just a sham. There's nothing here. This is like a, this is like a house built on fucking Melba toast and toothpicks. With the rebellion. Okay, I'm just gonna stop the video for a sec in a new segment of the show where I pause the review with my retro remote, but... Does anybody else notice that this movie kind of rips off Rogue One? I mean, I know I'm making a lot of comparisons and jokes, but- This movie rips off everything, you fucking idiot! It's oddly similar, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, it's amazing how many things this movie is like. That's so crazy. I mean, Steven, first ripping off Star Tours with Back to the Future of the Ride, and now this? Ripping off Star Tours. I don't know. You know what? I'm gonna make a sticky note of that later, as you guys can see there, and just stuff. There we go. Uh, we'll discuss it sometime in maybe part two or three, but- Something to think about. Just saying. Can I even bring it up now if you're going to bring it up later anyway? The one's gonna get confused! We gotta go back to the beginning of the story! No, no, Pumbaa, we're already wasting enough time. Let's just- One user, multiple characters. No, I guess that doesn't count. He's technically Pumbaa. It's got the voice clips, but... But it is just- it's- this is- this is closer to- That's right, Pumbaa! Thank you for ranting! This is basically that. Dim the lights and get back to the picture. I'll bring up some flaws later on her character, but for now, all of them lead the charge as a team with some decent chemistry and action bits against the villains of the movie. Which leads us to Nolan Centero, the head of IOI who wants to claim the Oasis for full control of the world both in technological feats and economics. He's your typical evil businessman in the vein of something like Slugworth and Willy Wonka. Wow, he's just another typical character that has very little of original character. That's crazy. It's almost like this movie has nothing going on and there's nothing in this story. It's crazy that he's just a generic businessman. That's that's right. That's or Lewis wild. Dachshund in Jurassic Park. Minus his drastic change in character and dominion. What the fuck, Colin? Nobody cares. Now, this cliche you might think has been done to death recently, but honestly, in comparison to other films, Satira is actually a bit more fun to watch as a one-dimensional villain. Not just the fact that they're pretty much taking... Oh, yeah, he's just a one-dimensional villain. And yeah, I've seen this type of character in hundreds of other movies. And yeah, there's nothing here that's interesting or original or innovative, as the title says here. Uh, ironically, there's nothing about it uh, that does any of those things, you know. But, you know, it's I still like the movie overall. One of Steel, Steel Gielberg's best. 
a major stab to the cryptocurrencies, loot boxes, and massive advertisements in the online and gaming world, which god damn is fucking annoying. But most of the credit goes to actor Ben Middleson, who unfortunately since Rogue One has been typecasted as tons of villains recently, suffering almost the same fate as the likes of Tim Roth or Christoph Waltz in their careers. Like I said, he first popped up in The Dark Knight Rises, but also in the god-awful uninspiring adaptation of Robin Hood as the Sheriff of Nottingham. All tax collections now go directly to the count room and double the guard. I'm sorry, Ben, but you're just no Alan Rickman. Cancel the kitchen scraps for lepers and orphans. No more merciful beheadings. And call off Christmas. And it would be great if you had more to say about why he's no Alan Rickman. I mean, that might be too much, but like, do you recognize as a reviewer what it is about this actor that makes him less interesting than Alan Rickman in this performance. Do you see anything specific you could point out? Like, I, I, I want Big Jack to succeed in life, and I'm looking at this and I'm like, this is a pretty bad review. Like, you're analyzing a lot of things kind of in relation to and surrounding the movie, but when it comes down to it, the actual, like, so far, there hasn't been much that's actually been like, this is why I don't like this. Specifically, this is the reason, and these are things, you know, it's been just kind of a lot of broad strokes, mostly. And then a lot of stroking off in the other parts of it that are just like his weird back backstory or whatever. But here, his character is less of a Steve Jobs stereotype and more on par with business villains of the 2000s, reminding me more of all things Von Scheck and Hey Arnold the Movie. Von Scheck? Hmm, I wonder if there's any relation. Yeah, that movie's kind of underrated and an obscure reference to bring up, but hear me out. Unlike Von Scheck, we don't really know his history on why he wants the Oasis other than power itself, but it's just fun to see how far he'll go to it. Okay, wait, thinks something is obscure, it's not... Because, because I don't know, Hey Arnold is popular. It, maybe not the movie, but the it's popular. I don't think it's that obscure. It's like, maybe it's an obscure... I mean, it is a little bit in this review of Ready Player One, maybe. But it's generally not an obscure thing, necessarily, no. Achieve his goals, even down to literally drone-bombing civilians, attempting to kill kids, and even holding neighborhoods at gunpoint. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I don't like corporate greed either, but what company has ever held you at gunpoint? Well, not yet, at least. Stop it, stop it, please, I beg you! His avatar is pretty generic, with the cross of Shaq and the likes of Ratchet it's from It's so Ro funny when people try to have, like, criticisms of, like, Disney or something. Like, you buy everything that they make, probably, I assume. I mean, you probably call it, oh, I'm a reviewer, so I have to go see the movie. But you you'd probably have seen every Marvel movie in the theaters... Like, you, I mean, I, I'm making a lot of assumptions here, but, like, probably seen every Star Wars movie in the theater, consumed all of it, and, like, you're gonna make, I mean, are you, are you even allowed to make comments about Disney at that point? You're the reason they're allowed to keep doing this, so, like... Uh, yeah, yeah. If, they, if if at some point Disney starts holding people at gunpoint, then you have no one to blame but yourself. Robots. And I really dig the concept of his volcanic s castle, guarded by several IOI stormtroopers, Atari Easter eggs, and quite the arsenal. Which I'll explain. Listen, there's nothing wrong with liking robots, TM. Ro robots 2005. Was it five? I think it was 2004. Robots 2000 whatever. Good good film. Later. Be careful not to choke on your aspirations, director. Man, you're even taking concepts from Lord Vader's castle? This is sounding like a little too much, Nolan. I'm in charge. Do you feel in charge? I mean, who else would have a castle that evil looking? All right. Hold on. Fire it up, Agent 92. You're surrounded. You won't get away this time. You guys don't know when to quit, do you? Uh... Oh my god, didn't we already see this before too? No, Iron Man shows up. Oh, it's exciting everyone. Iron Man's about to be here. You cannot escape. No matter where you go, we will track you. The dig is up, kid. You lost. Yeah, I don't think so, Norman. <laughs> this is this is the significantly more embarrassing version, frankly, of the That's right, Mega Man! This is this is worse. <coughs> I don't know, this is just worse for some reason. He made the whole fucking video and he's got the costumes and everything. And it's probably like people, at least it's probably not him in those costumes. Well it might be. It might be him, actually. I don't know, but <coughs> 
It might not be, too. He has other people in the video. It's probably somebody else, at least, but for some reason it still just feels more embarrassing to me than the That's Right Mega Man stuff. Sir, my boy! Drop by to make a business lecture, have we? Your application to join the Avengers didn't patch the board, so I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. And you know, what's great, too, is that, like, what are we watching here? It's fan fiction. I, I mean, we've definitely seen stuff like this before. I mean, not like this specifically, but, like, stuff that would qualify as video fan fiction. It's not a new concept. It's existed. But it, it, it's it's somewhat rare, I think. I think we, we still generally think of fan fiction as being a, a written medium on, like, fanfiction.net, AO3, Wattpad, what have you. But this is this is this is video fan fiction. This is a this is a this is we've evolved this medium. It's it's de it's finally into you know it's 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 new era. I'm sure there's fan fiction video games too. I mean like there's fan games obviously, but like well no yeah I mean there that's what it is that's what they would be yeah fan games like any kind of Sonic RPG maker game or some shit where Sonic kills Shadow and then has gay sex with the corpse. You know, that would be, uh... That would be... That would be the equivalent of this, essentially. This is the... This is the gay hedgehog necrophilia of, uh, Ready Player One reviews. Storch, you got me late! Two, actually. I got the team assembled. We'll be ready when you need us. And I mapped out a route for the unit so you don't get lost. Take left, and you're off. I ate one, Stark. Thanks. Give me a latte and a cup of cheeseburger, and we'll call it even. I got an idea. I'll give you cover fire. Bro, Tony Stark, you're like a bajillionaire. Why would you get this fucking jabroni on an on autism box to, to buy you the, <laughs> the the latte or whatever? I think you could probably buy it yourself, Stark. Come on. You really are a dickhead. They were right about you. Huh? Hit go up Michael Bay style. Come on, it actually was Tristan was making a claw quest thing in RPG Maker. Had a bunch of references. I don't think it ever continued, but it was there was a few it was a couple years ago. There was a it was like a, a, a couple room demo thing that happened. It was pretty cool. What's that, bro? Patient 92. Should we follow up? No! Report back to Corporate Commander. Stark is mine. Like what could I, what could even happen today? What else could even happen today? What we're like at this point, like this is such a parody of itself. I mean, Iron Man showed up and he hung out with them and fought with them, and he was like friends with them, like they were both on the Avengers. And now at this point, it's like, like who is he seeing here from like off screen? Who are who is it that he's witnessing? It's gonna be like President Obama and Mao Zedong. What are you guys doing here? Well, uh, yes, it's true. Uh, I am now a communist. Uh, please, b b b b let me be clear. If Thomas shows up, that'll really just be the ultimate. I mean, that could happen at any moment. It looks like part two. What's in the part two thing here? There's like some Elsa chick with ice powers. Um, there's a fat guy. There's a dinosaur, I guess. It looks like part two is going to be like pretty, I, I don't know, pretty lore heavy, I guess. I, I don't know what part three's where's part three where's part three okay part three looks like it's gonna be a big fucking thing i am so excited for part three i kind of don't give a shit about part two we'll watch it but i mean not tonight god not tonight but part three i'm i'm so down for fucking part three look at all this shit that's happening this is gonna be the biggest fuck fest there's dbz's there's like a little danny the panda dressed as naruto down here there's like a, 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 a league of f 
fucking autistic Avengers. There's a there's a DeLorean. There's a King Kong. There's an Iron Giant. The war is going to be on with this fucker. This fucker in the in the he's got the Infinity Gauntlet. It looks like it's 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 going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to be so exciting. Every user, everywhere, all at once. Doc, you here? <sighs> it even works underwater. You know what's amazing about this is that, I mean, and they're different types of videos, obviously, but... I compared this to Origami Kingdom earlier with the really long intro. This is a worse review than an Origami Kingdom video. I mean, like most of the ones that I have seen, this is a worse review. Cuz like those will actually talk about the movie generally. Like they'll spend most of the time talking about the thing. And they might talk about it in a very broad strokes way. They might not say much about it. They, but they focused on it at least. Like this is worse than the Modern Family Guy video as an actual review. I mean, that video goes through a list of things, a lot of which I can agree with. It's just that he's very animated, and you know, all, all the reasons you've seen the video. But like. You know, there's like, it's focused on Family Guy for most of it. There's occasionally tangents about a fucking Mr. Freeze or something. And obviously it's like, it's like way more, I mean, no, but like on a different level, this is worse. This isn't like chimping out at fucking Peter Griffin, but it's, but it's such a production though. <laughs> like this is fucking so much. I'm so happy to be the 4,001st person. To have seen this video. Like, I, I cracked that 4,000 mark. That was me. I'm the number one guy in the new, the new, the new millennium here. Uh, but, like, yeah, this is worse than a lot of videos that have been bad reviews that we've, this is worse. No, I would say this is a lot better, though, than the wall review. The wall review is still one of the worst reviews. Like, as actual reviews of a thing, it's one of the worst reviews I've ever seen. The wall review... There's been other stuff that's like worse production values, worse opinions, whatever. Uh, insane people like the Origami Kingdom. Uh, it, but but the wall review is uniquely terrible in, in just a way that's like it's it yet to have been. I've yet I'm yet to see a movie be reviewed so poorly. Uh, it, uh, this is at least better than that, but this is it's close. It's not. It's not that, it's, it's, I mean, at least it spends some of its time talking about the fucking movie, unlike that, you know, unlike that video. Uh, it, it, this is really fucking bad. It's, m like, mostly these stupid fucking skits, and, and even the parts where he talks about the movie, he'll go off into tangents about other crossovers and, like, the book that it's based on and other movies that are similar to it and not really get too in depth about like any of the you know filmmaking or whatever of i'm amazed to see how he stretches this out for fucking three parts i don't understand how that's gonna be fucking possible because i mean he's already talked about the plot of it i guess he's gonna get more into detail in part two and three we're probably misjudging it by just starting with part one and you know not seeing the other two parts but I mean, like, how are you going to stretch it out for that long, though? Even if you do talk in more detail, what fucking what are you going to say? Oh, God, I'm scared. More skits. Yeah, Magic Mush sometimes watches the stream. I really wish he was here right now because this is the channel he needs to see. He needs to see this. Ch He's talked about rip-off nostalgia critic people in the past, and I can't believe I've never heard of this guy. I don't remember. Oh yeah, no, I do remember. I know how I found this guy. I found him, I think like this morning or yesterday morning or something. And it was because I found like a video that was like a, it was like a, 
a fan-made stream highlight thing of, of Big Jack Films. And I looked at that guy's channel, and it wasn't very interesting. But then I looked up Big Jack Films, and, you know, that's where we... That's how we, we got here. So, uh, you're fucking welcome. Fuck you. You're welcome. I, I, I brought into this world the greatest thing since Dogs Eating Dogs 6, potentially. Or at least since Sonic Sega Gamer, you know? Dear Jack, if my calculations are correct, you will receive this letter at 2.05 without my presence. Rest assured I'm alive and well, but my time in this era is over. In my recent discoveries, I found my path is wanted in a new time, within a new life. I so there's actually a lot of other fucking footage of this, like, steampunk guy dressed up as, like, oh my god, look at this. Look at this fucking frame. They really... They really go at this. They're, this is <clears throat> this is what they're all about. They there's multiple of them it seems that are all just really into nostalgia critic skits, and wanted to make like the greatest nostalgia critic skits that they could ever make. And boy howdy, they're trying. In life, <laughs> I can't say what, but the protection of where I go. But I yeah, the to robot suits all right. Again, the steampunk Skrillex guy is like the best character in this, in a non-funny sense. I mean, in even in a funny sense, he's kind of he's kind of cool. But he's got like a cool outfit, and he's got like a cool a good look. I mean, like he looks like a comic book character or something. I could see this this character being. Like illustrated. I found my path is one. I like him more with the Skrillex hair in, though. In a new time. But like, and the actor is kind of decent for this time. role. This fucking like, like robot suit shit that he's got. He had those gauntlets before, and here he's got this going on. This is not bad. I think he knows this dude. Apparently, is like a cosplay type of person. He he I, probably knows people in that scene. Uh, so you know, there's that. He's probably into the cosplay stuff. I got to give credit where it's due. This character. He's all right. Yeah, this is an all right. I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't know about a, as a character, but like for what this is, yeah, this guy's all right. Life. I like this dude. I can't say what, but the protection. I want more of the the Skrillex man. Where I go, but I wanted to keep you in the loop for your own journey. Your destiny lies upon a different path than mine. I have left specific instructions on some of my personal effects and tech that I pass on to you. Read them well and use them to better the future. More will be told in time. For now, Jack, I say farewell. Oh, F for the Shattered Bull. That's a shame. I hope... Do you have another one? You've been a good, kind, and loyal friend to me as one of my greatest students, and you've made a real difference in my life. I mean, I assume that this guy probably has a bunch of other, like, parts that he shows up in on this channel, so I'm excited to see more from this guy. I'll always treasure our friendship, and thank you for creating the greatest achievement humankind. Somebody said that he's the Spoonie of this this universe. Yeah, well, keep in mind, this universe is canonically connected to the, like, officially, because Nostalgia Critic's in this video. So, like, this is officially connected to the Ready, to the, <clears throat> Ready Player One. I mean, basically, it might as well be. It's officially connected to the, to boldly flee reviewer verse storyline. So Spoonie is in this universe, too. But... You know, I see what you mean. He's the one who's like kind of bringing something here. It will change He's the, the doctor in Sano. <laughs> Be proud of that, my friend. Until we meet again, Toronto's greatest supervillain and evil genius, Doctor Terrellot. Wait, why are you evil? Hang on, you're a supervillain. Toronto's greatest too. That's how you know he's not from here, because he says, he says Toronto. He pronounces the second T. You can't do that. You're gonna get shot and then hanged. But if you're a supervillain, then why is this guy, should we, oh wait, is he the baddies? Maybe that's why he likes more traditional heroes in his movies. Maybe that's what we're, we got some alt-right dog whistling here. Oh my god. Oh, shiver my, shiver my gay timbers. Yeah, he's never even heard about Doug Ford. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ, learn audio mixing while you smash your action figures together, please. Jesus fucking Christ. Random phone call.
Back for more, Commander. Oh, it's this scene. Now, this is the one we watched already. We've seen this one. Yeah, there's bat. There's orc. There's orcs. When we saw this without context, it was in a best of, like, best of 2023 thing. And it was, like, fucked. It was just fucked. And then here comes a DeLorean. I don't know how he got access to this car. I think it's his, like, it's actual footage because it has an Ontario license plate that's, like, custom, and it's on this DeLorean. He must have rented it or something. Yeah, the only thing we watched in that best of, we the, the, the next thing was like some boring shit, so we were just, I was like, let's go watch the actual video that the interesting part with Nostalgia Critic was from, and that's how we got here, and that's why we're watching this whole Ready Player One fucking thing, because I, I wouldn't watch this if it was just, okay, no, no, I probably still would have clicked on this, actually, because I, I really do hate Ready Player One a lot, so like, yeah, I probably would have clicked on this. <laughs> I think I would have anyway, <laughs> even if I didn't know better. If I, it would have been so great if we clicked on this and there was just surprise Doug Walker. But we had surprise Doug Walker anyway, so I mean, uh, hey, it's the same. It's the same. It's the same thing. probably going to end the stream toward when the end of this video is I would say uh, so uh, you know if you want to if you want to hang out I got to go eat pork and stuff but this is this has been real tomorrow I'll be back we'll watch more of this tomorrow book your fucking mark your calendars I don't have anything else going on so just tomorrow we got more big jack films we'll watch part two maybe even part three but I want to see more from his channel he has ASMR videos of Android 18 from Dragon Ball Z, and that's very exciting. He currently has a femoid on screen in a DeLorean. I'm just gonna come everywhere. I know what these things are, and there's a woman. You can't even do this to me. And she's dressed as sexy clown. She's guys, guys. I mean, it's the sex clown, everyone. It's like meat clown, but for sex. Get in, put in. That is so hot. Oh yeah, cyberpunk campaign. Um, shit. Yeah, I can do cyberpunk campaign tomorrow. I can do that. I gotta put together a sheet. But uh, yeah, we can we can definitely do that. What time does that start, Alan? <laughs> That's your biggest question? Brad said you needed a ride, so I got you one. <sighs> Is that your real voice? Hang on. Whoa, slow this down. That's your biggest question? Brad said you needed a ride, so I got you one. Oh man, that's... I hope you don't talk like that in real life. Jeez, that's... <sighs> and the others? Safe. Meet him at a rendezvous point. Even your robot girlfriend you didn't tell me about. I owe you one, love. We need to stay anonymous while we're on the road. We need to watch some of the videos. Did he call her Love? Is this like his girlfriend? Is this his in in universe girlfriend, who he loves and cherishes? Is this his dynamite gal? I wonder if it's his real girlfriend. Probably not. Um, we have to see some of the videos because it was a little boring. He was doing like a vlog travel thing with his friend. It was a little boring, but we have to see more of the videos where it's just him not playing a character. Like this is a version of himself. But I want to see if his off-character version of himself is, like, still like this. Because, I, I I don't know, I this is... If only Ma Mama Max had just done this. If only... This is the more honest version of Mama Max, right? Because, like, it's just the same thing. It's like the power fantasy, I want to save the world and everybody loves me thing. But it's like, it's just a little more upfront about what it's getting at. It's less of a scam. We should get another vehicle, because things are about to get nuts. And the best thing we can do is fly forward into the future. Yeah, just keep a low profile with Harley Quinn and the DeLorean. That's right.
so I guess that's sort of the end of part one, but there's still like another three minutes here. Hello, Jack. This is your critic here. Thank you for giving to the charity. I know I'm yes. literally doing a cameo for it's you. It's a charity, huh? And there's a whole cast here. Everybody who's to blame. Like I'm sending you the video footage in a bit. I mean, we just got done filming that. But still, you pay for a cameo. I gotta give you one. So, so here it is. So, so you get two, kind of, sort of, maybe. Anyway, you're giving to a really, really good cause. That's what's important. Uh, it is the uh, Gates Cancer. So it's later in the day. Okay, I'll do the. I'll be there for later in the day. Uh, so we'll do an early stream, people. It's. It will. We'll end this sh just shortly. We'll do some super chats. I'll wake up and then shortly thereafter we'll do some fucking stream. So get your fucking get up bright and early tomorrow for some like maybe eight or nine Eastern. We'll start early with some insane shit. Foundation, so thank you so very very much for that. Um, hopefully by the time I get back today, I should have the cameo for you. So I don't really know what else to say here, but um, sweet. I don't know, it's like came in my head. Anyway, thank you for uh, <laughs> donating to the charity. And uh, I hope the video turns out good, man. Take care. Oh, it turned out great, uh, Doug. It turned out just fantastic. So he's walking dramatically through the streets of Toronto here. He's very stoically walking through the streets of Toronto. Uh, Toronto. He's on, he's on Patreon. This is an authentic Toronto production. We're right here in front of, I think this is Union Station right here. And oh, there's the CN Tower, yeah. I think that's Union. Uh, wow, yeah, no, I mean, this guy's local to me. You know, uh, shit, I mean, I'll, I'll say my thing that I usually say. Because I know this guy's around me. I don't know, that doesn't mean he's going to see the stream or anything, but... This is a very, very good video. Don't worry. Don't ask for specifics about why I think it's good. Don't ask me specifically why I like this video, but I do. It's a very good video. Please make more videos like this. For the love of God, don't ever stop making videos like this. It's very good. It's very good. Post credits! There he is! Oh, swiggity swooty! It's Thanos and Sauron, everybody! Who left? Who thought the stream was over? It's not over! Loki has acquired the gauntlet, my lord. The factions within the old universe are sure to rate my organs the last years. Forgive me for asking, my lord. But do you think it's wise? To have the gauntlet sent to Lord Gabriel. Perhaps you think our master would allow you a chance after what you were told when you snapped it. Even if you in retreat, we have reserves. I don't even understand what's being said here. I don't even know what's happening. I kind of forgot this was all like framed as a Lord of the Rings video too. Like I kind of forgot that this whole thing is technically also just the plot of Lord of the Rings. Like, for people that fucking missed it, there's a whole segment toward the beginning here. For people that just recently joined, check this out. Check this shit out. Enjoy this for a second. Here's Frieza or whoever. Yeah, the portal. There, that's just there. That just happens for some reason. Don't ask questions. Don't ask why. It's it's just there. Me for asking, my lord. But do you think it's wise to have the gauntlet sent to Lord Gabriel? Raticalize. Our master would allow you a chance after what you were told when you snapped it. Even if you in retreat. Yeah, this is just a super great Ready Player One review, dude. This is this the screams Ready Player One review. We have reserves. Many reserves. You, like I, ought to be stationed back on the likes of- Somebody says, Dude, I love Blind Guardian. Yeah, that's my favorite song. The Empire and Cyber the Orphans to catch up their goals. I have to remember to do the lyrics for User's Paradise as well. Master seems fit to use us. No more place, Thanos. 
I am not getting anything that this fucking Sauron is saying. I'm not picking up on any of this. Did Was there ever a scene where Sauron, like, spoke like this, too? I mean, he was... I think he was just an ominous figure that didn't say anything, really. I, I don't think he ever had, like, lines. So there's, like, this is just, like, spooky evil Satan, man. This is just, it's just Dark Bowser voice changer, but with extra steps. In st well, not even extra steps, it's just Dark Bowser with voice changer. But just instead of, like, screaming at a little kid, there's, like, a plot here. And it's all about, like, the fucking review verse and Ready Player One. This is, but it's like voice changer and character. And here, here's, here's Sa Sauron, he's here. Is, we just need some loud fucking, like, Mario and Luigi music. Well, that's the video chat, and that'll be the stream. I'm doing some super chats here. Stick around for a little bit, just a little bit. Uh, let me, let me see here. Um, just fuck, sure, play this song. Why not? Sure. Awesome. Um, let me see here. Uh, two pounds from, uh, Niall Scott. You ever seen Ivan Doran? Weird vocal users exist. What does that mean? Vocal users. Ivan Doran. Oh, the high note guy. Yeah, I remember this guy. Confusing octaves. I think I looked at him on stream. Or I've seen somebody else look at him on stream. I'm not sure. But he's a he's a he's an interesting guy. Um, if there's other people like if there's a community of people like him, then that would be interesting. I know of him, but I don't know if there's if there's other people. You say that weird weird vocal users. If there's like a community of other users like him, that would be really interesting. Like if it turns out that what he does is like a subsection of humanity that's just doing that for some reason, that would be interesting. Um, let me see here. Ranma Sautome with $2. I swear I only catch you live when I'm homesick. Well, um, happy you got the flu or whatever. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I hope you're feeling better, though. Um, Big Al has become a member. Thank you. Big ups to the gifters. This user is the gift sub appreciator. Well, was there was there gift sub people? Hang on, I might have missed that if that was. Hang on, because the, the 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 fucking the the OBS doesn't show me that. Let me see. No, there was no other gift people. Uh, I guess you got the gift membership and now you've you've continued it. Ah, yeah, member for one month here. Well, you know, the shout outs to the shout outs to the alpha lesbian. You know, uh, five bucks from tv 2 vs Watch RTOM76 Left for Dead 2 sucks. Unhinged review. I finally found it. Also, I found someone who I think plagiarized Origami Kingdom in Milk Barn. Listen, what I want you to do, Tivi, put together a list of all of the people that you've been fucking putting in Milk Barn, because I can't find them all with all the other posts. Just make a Google Doc and put them all in there, and at some point I'll get I'll work my way through it, because it looks like there's some stuff that might be good. So, you know, throw that all in there. Whatever priority you want, you know, do it your own way. But it looks like there's some good stuff there. Uh, and, and, and yeah, the, the Left for Dead Left for Dead video might be interesting. I don't know anything about that game, though, but, I mean, maybe I don't need to. Five bucks from Kate. New fetish just dropped with the ears. I guess so. I mean, I've never fucking heard of that shit. Alice Mother Faladging Ball Salad Sandwich with $2.00. Check out the theorizer's Mort theory. Unhinged. Your name is unhinged, but I mean, I guess you would know then. The theorizer's the theorizer Mort. What is, what is this? Mort theory. The crimes of Mort. Oh, I see. It's two and a half hours talking about. Wait, it's. 
Mult oh, it's this is a full series. I see. This is a full series. And then there's a second one from four months ago? What the fuck? Alright, well, I mean, maybe. Yeah, I guess. Fucking maybe. Sh Jesus Christ. This one has a lot of views. What the fuck? Okay. Alright. 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 Five, uh, two bucks from the Cat Warrior. Breaking Deadwing should be a bingo space. I mean, yeah, that would be maybe a good one for any time when there's just some absolutely insane shit and I have to just, you know, ah, 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 and I just can't, I have nothing to even say. I'm just making noises. Uh, that, that, that definitely happens sometimes. Uh, two bucks from Mikey Jesus. The Lightbringer mantle has been passed on. Yeah, he's, I've heard he's the fucking universe, you know? Five bucks from Autistic Wolf. Thanks for the evening stream, Bear. Just for fun, I watch Ned to ask you to elaborate on exactly why you didn't like Ready Player One. Let's hear that rant. Well, I mean, you got most of it, but... I don't know. <clears throat> the, the core of it is, I guess, I like a lot of the things that are in Ready Player One, and I think that Ethan Klein, or whatever his fucking name is, <laughs> Ernest Klein... Uh, I, I think Ernest Klein, uh, I think Ernest Klein and I like a lot of the same things. And, uh, and so that's why it's disappointing to me, because it's so bullshit. I mean, he just kind of throws that all in there, and it's just, it's, I guess it's fine if you're uncritical, and you're, you're just, like, someone who wants to see more of those things. But, like, I guess because, I guess it's because... I listened to that podcast, that 372 pages, which was made because they found this book and didn't like it. But I, wa I listened to that, and it's just like, these are two older guys, and this would have been a great opportunity to, like, introduce these things to another group of people. Like, it's such a big platform. It's this best-selling book, this Spielberg movie. It could have shown people why people like Gundam. Or, like, Mecha Godzilla, or Iron Giant is, like, completely ruined in that fucking movie. Like, he's just there and definitely shouldn't be there. Or, like, I, I don't know, who else is there? Like, there's Spartans in the movie, Halo Spartans. Like, there's a lot of cool stuff about all of those things, and it just misses the opportunity to tell people why those things are cool. And instead, it's just assuming that you will, ass you will think that it's cool just because it's, like... Cool. Just it's it it insists upon itself. That's why. That's why I don't like Ready Player One, and the se the sequels. Are, and also, it's just dumb. Like the whole thing is just fucking dumb. There's just pages of it that are just like Wikipedia articles. It's fucking insane. But it's 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 ridiculous that that shit got popular. Um. But yeah, no. I I I think that it would would be great to see something like that that actually gets people like the One Piece live action show where like a bunch of fucking boomers watched it who would never watch One Piece or read it or anything because it's just a Netflix show. And as it turns out, that was a very good adaptation of One Piece. And so people are really into One Piece now who maybe never would have been before because. This showed them why. Why people like it. It gave them those feelings in a way that is digestible to this uh, this wider audience, you know? And that's what Ready Player One could have been, but instead it's just, I like these things! <laughs> um, uh, 281 from Exile Postman, he just says, why though? <laughs> I don't know. Why indeed? Five bucks from Kate. What is this, 2012? Also, I can't help but love a fellow Weird Al enjoyer. I was listening to some Weird Al a little while ago, you know? And that stuff is still really good. Those videos... You, you guys know Jordan Peele and Keegan-Michael Key were, were in the fucking uh, White and Nerdy video? They were, like, the first gangsters that go by in the in the car and, and like, shake their heads at Weird Al. It was it was Key and Peele. It was them. I, I, I mean, I didn't know who they were back when I was originally into that stuff but watching that now it's like wow he and peel are there <laughs> of hideo kojima fame he and peel are there oh we're just doing a a thing here now we're doing vampira from devon townsend all right awesome night sure um let's see here 
Uh, yeah, no, they're, Weird Al's great. I've got to do User's Paradise. It's not going to be as good as Weird Al, but, you know, it'll be fun. Five bucks from Mr. Midnight 1448. I'm getting Ultimate Showdown from 2007 vibes from this. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It's, again, very anachronistic. I didn't get a bingo, but hopefully someone did. Five bucks from TFD Bag. Enjoy some burrito money, Claw, if you're taking suggestions. I always am at this point. You know what? I just blank it from now on. I'm always taking suggestions. If you're going to super chat me, you might as well give me a suggestion for something. Because I'll at least look at it and be like, hey, maybe. I had a, a guy with $200 the other day wanted me to do a stream on uh, uh, Ghost. Like, True Capitalist Radio. I had, I'm aware of Ghost. I've heard of him. For, I don't know if you're here, Coyote. Uh, thank you very much, by the way. But uh, I, I've heard of Ghost for years. Like, fuck, I remember when 4chan used to have threads about him constantly. Uh, back in, like, 2010 or whatever. B used to love that guy. Uh, but I never actually listened to him until I was cap catching up on the Ralph and Medicare shit. And fucking... Ralph tried to, like, pick a fight with Ghost, and there was just this insane part where Ghost was like, YOU WANT ME TO FUCKING START THE, the FUCKING TROLL WAR WITH YOU, MOTHERFUCKER, YOU PIECE OF SHIT! And it was pretty great. <laughs> it was pretty great. I think I'm on, I don't know if I agree with them politically, but I think I'm on Ghost's side in a general sense. <laughs> it was pretty funny. So I'm, I'm looking forward to maybe doing that. You had another uh, suggestion too. I'll, I think they were both ones that I've been meaning to do. So look out for that at some point. I don't know if you're here, but uh, yeah, that's coming. Suggestions are always on the table. Um, let me see here. Uh, yeah, if you're taking suggestions, D TFD bag. Uh, how about David Vega, a Mickey Mouse, a Mickey Mouse capade reviewer who went completely nuts? Ah. Okay, what's the name here? It's, uh, no one run. No one run. 732. Uh, no one run. Charity video making intended here. Uh, oh boy. Oh, this is concerning. Because we also have, like, uh, just a bunch of other weird shit happening. I don't know what any of these other videos are. These all... Big Sis is in here. Now it's really up. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> but no one run here. David Like Whoa Vega, 76. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, sexy stuff right here. This is a good suggestion. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll look at this. Uh, probably not tomorrow's stream, because we're going to do more of that other guy, but, you know, this is going to be on the list. Thank you. Um, let me see here. Um, uh, where, where was I here? Uh, five bucks from Delcos. Watch Terra from when he was called Holocaust. Very, uh, interesting. He doesn't do reviews, though. He's been doing it since 2010-ish. And was RLSH related. Terra? Oh, the fucking supervillain guy? That guy? Yeah, ter Terror Man or whatever? He's a real life suit. Oh, God. Oh, God. That makes sense. He was saying he was Toronto's biggest supervillain. So he he's one of those people that pretends to be a real superhero in real life. Oh, God. Oh, that's funny. That's interesting. Okay. Holocaust was his name? Yeah, I can see why you might want... That's not good for the SEO. Uh, <laughs> that must have been back during the edgy era, you know. That was his... That was his... That was his, his B phase. Five bucks from Natalie Danusi. The love interest character looks like the chick from Delgo. Oh, I don't know that reference, but... She looks like something that would be called gay, gay furry sex in... Uh, in uh, the, sa the the shape of water, you know. I don't think that was gay. I think mean, it was straight furry sex. Well, scaly. I don't know. Uh, a dollar from Ada Nitro. Thank you. Uh, two uh, two dollars from Nick C. Uh, the claw. You should vlog with this fella. Uh, I'm I'm probably all right. I I don't think I need to do that necessarily. Uh, maybe. I mean, he doesn't seem like a bad guy, you know. If he whatever. Five bucks from Just Wow, Nick. Time cop. Since you looked at, I don't know why you're 
Super Chat starts with Time Cop. What, what's happening? Time Cop. Since you looked at Therians a couple streams ago, if you have some time, the website Draconic might be worth looking at. Man, I gotta say, I've been wa I've been I I've been watching old Medicare stuff as I've been mentioning, and the, and I I was like sleeping last night listening to the fucking other kin, like the compilation one. I think it's from Tobias Reaper's channel, uh, and it's this compilation of like every time Medicare talked about other kin, and it's so crazy to me when we look at like the the Tumblrisms video from like nearly a decade ago. Or a decade ago, it might be that old. Uh, and it's talking about these people on Tumblr who are like, you know, I mean, it's like the the extreme pronouns in bio, multiple, you know, everything in bio kind of person who's also an other kin and has 17 headmates. And, and it's like, I, I see so many people say that like that was a small minority of people on Tumblr. It wasn't really that big of a thing. People didn't really take it that far. No, they did. They sure did. I just don't know, because, like, the whole internet looks like that now. You know what I mean? To a lesser degree. But everybody's bio on everything now looks a little bit like the old Tumblr ones that were a joke. So I'm just saying, maybe it was a little bit more fucking formative than people thought. I don't know. Um... Uh, interesting stuff. Two bucks from Lava Mantis. Dr uh, Dr Draconic? The website Draconic? I can look into that. Uh, Draconic. Uh, th ther Therian. Uh, question for Dragon Therians. Otherkin Wiki. Amino Apps. I don't know, if you're on the Discord, you can share it. I'm not really finding Draconic as a website. There's like Reddits, there's a Wiki. There's a Mino, there's a Quora, there's a Therian wiki at fandom.com, which, you know, that's a real marriage of the fucking best people on the internet right there. Uh, two bucks from Lava Mantis, hope your pork is free of rot. It'll be fine, it's, it's, it's cooking, it's still cooking, it's on low. It's not like it's just been sitting out there like King Cobra food. Uh, two bucks from Ranma Sautome. That was mentally exhausting. Can't wait for more. Well, tune in early tomorrow. Get some rest, and we're right back to it, basically. Uh, 8.57. Hitching up the buggy. Turning lots of butter. Raised a barn on Monday. Soon I'll raise another. Think you're, think you're very righteous? I don't remember all the lyrics, but... Uh, Ten bucks from... Oh, uh, 6.44 from Exile Postman. Speaking of burritos, you still gotta make the slug burrito. It's your destiny. Was it slugs? It was... No, it was snails. I found the snails. They're at Dollarama. They actually sell, like, escargot at a fucking dollar store. It's, it's, it, it's fitting. I also found the cherry cardinals for the cherry cardinal burger. So I'm gonna do that next time, too. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, uh, definitely making the snail burrito. The, the big question about that, there's, like, pork patty MRE and, like, pate in there. Uh, and then also fucking trying to construct it in the way that he does where there's like four fucking tortillas and a bunch of toothpicks and shit. I don't even know how that, I don't know how that like is made. I don't know how to do it like that. You know, I've never fucked up a burrito that bad, but I mean, it'll happen. It's definitely going to happen. It's just a matter of sourcing everything. I want, I think I could probably find it all in Toronto, but I also have other recipes too. I'm working my way through the list, but more stuff keeps happening. Uh, it, it's gonna happen, though. Uh, Ten bucks from Judge and Jury. If you ever want to bully a chat a chat member as a teenager, my friends and I did a shitty reviewer parody. Just look up the word Schmorgenborg. Well, I mean, all right. Uh, it can't be as bad as what we just watched. I mean, I I doubt I doubt that it's gonna be as 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 promising as Big Jack films, Schmor Schmorgenborg official channel, and uh, yeah, you got the Ballad of Shady Hood Man, Attack of the Bad CG. What Blind Guardian is this? Oh, it's Battlefield. Okay. Uh, I uh, didn't listen to too much of this album. I really like Maiden and the Minstrel Night, but the rest. Oh, and. Uh, uh, the fucking last one, the big long one, uh, uh, and then there was silence. The, the, too much of this album sounds the same, that's the problem. Uh, Schmorgenboard, yeah, I mean, 
you know, at some point, I can maybe put this on for chat if I gotta do a Hassan break. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll save it. Uh, let me see here. Uh, th that'll do it for the stream, though. Thank you, everybody, uh, for watching the stream. Uh, it's been a little bit of a late one. Tomorrow we'll be back early, uh, to do some more fucking nonsense. I've got, like, not, I got stuff later in the evening going on, so, uh, we're gonna be playing some game, and it's gonna be fun. Uh, thank you for, thank you for stopping by. Uh, I hope you guys had fun. This is, uh, this has been real. It's been real! You know what I'm saying? It's been real! Uh, we found a real and impeccable person today. You should all feel very proud of yourselves for having tuned into this stream. And you should make a point of tuning into the next stream. Because you never know when we'll find another wonderful person. I mean, tomorrow we're going to be pretty sad on looking into more of... Uh, what's his name? Big Digger Nick or whatever? Big Big Jack Films. Big Jack's Films. We're going to be looking into him. Uh, we're going to be looking into more of him, but there's probably going to be some other people, and, you know, who knows? There's Android 18 ASMR on his channel, so it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be fantastic! Um, so thank you for watching, everybody. And, uh, penis. Ta ta take it easy.